didn't work. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. To protect his home and family from disaster, Steve used courage, wisdom, and his camera phone. That should do it. Way to go, Steve. By simply taking digital pictures of his family's important documents, Steve can always have them stored safely online, no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Sherry Ann. Oil declined as doubts circulated over Saudi Arabia's ability to implement additional pledged production cuts. The kingdom says it will pump seven and a half million barrels a day next month, about a million barrels below its official OPEC plus output target and the lowest level for 18 years. Let's discuss this with Nasdaq senior energy director Tamar Esner. Tamar, great to have you back. So we have seen the rise in oil prices in the regular New York session, but then those gains being erased. What does this tell us about how big the supply glut is at the moment and how much Saudi Arabia's latest moves could help? Great to be here. Um, I, I think that the market was a little taken aback by Saudi's announcement today. We're only 11 days into what was a historic agreement in terms of the duration and the, the degree of cuts, and already they're cutting further. So it was sort of a negative indicator in terms of a read-through that they're perhaps seeing on the demand side. Um, more broadly, I do think that the oil fundamentals are improving a little bit, but from a low base. Uh, and we see that reflected in the price. You know, we're up uh, quite a bit over the last couple of sessions, although not today. Um, I think that the supply is being reined in. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on QuickTake by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Good morning from London. I'm Sandra Kilhoff with this Bloomberg Business Flash. Now, we are seeing European stocks turning slightly higher. They were initially a bit lower at the open, but now the stock 600 up three-tenths of a percent. The FTSE gaining half a percent. The DAX currently unchanged. The CAC 40 slightly weaker. U.S. futures a bit of a mixed bag, still pointing slightly lower, although the NASDAQ could open higher. It follows a risk-off day in Asia following the news that China has banned Australian meat imports. But seemingly the fact that Wuhan is now going to test everyone in the city seems to be pushing um, the risk on sentiment slightly higher this morning. Now, we are seeing bonds slightly in the red for the yield on the 10-year barely down a basis point at 71 basis points. We are seeing the 10-year bond yield higher at negative 49. 10-year gilt yields up a basis point at 28 basis points this morning. Havens are bid. Bloomberg dollar spot index up one-tenth of a percent. The yen trading at 107 spot six. Sterling holding at 123. The euro at 108. Oil is edging higher after Saudi Arabia announced deeper production cuts. WTI trading at $24 a barrel. That's a Bloomberg business flash. Now here's Lynn Garrens with more on what's going on around the world. Sandra, thank you. Russia is lifting its nationwide lockdown even as daily new coronavirus cases surge past most European countries. President Vladimir Putin is ending the stay-at-home order. Russia's economy has contracted by a third since the lockdown began, while oil's collapse is also adding even more pressure. Infections have topped 10,000 a day for the past eight days. In South Korea, the Come Forward, Get Tested strategy, which has helped contain the coronavirus, has run into an obstacle. It's homophobia following an outbreak linked to clubs, several of them frequented by gay customers. Health officials are trying to track more than 5,500 people, but more than half remain out of reach. This morning, 101 new confirmed cases were linked to nightclubs. And some parts of the Philippines are to remain under virus lockdown. That says President Rodrigo Duterte says 
the nation can't afford a second or third wave of infections. Areas with high rates will be kept in a stay-at-home order after its schedule end on Friday. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Naira. Leanne, thank you so much. Now to earnings, and Allianz has reported first quarter operating profit of 2.3 billion euros, slightly beating estimates. It comes after the insurance giant withdrew its profit target at the end of April. Earlier, Manus Cranny and I spoke to the company's CFO, Julio Terzariol, who told us headwinds might continue in the coming quarters. The situation is very dynamic. We see now there is a easing of the lockdown also in Europe. We see that China is getting back on a sort of recovery, but there is still very much of an uncertainty. So from that point of view, we remain kind of uh, cautious. When you look at our numbers for uh, the Q1, you can see there was an impact coming from COVID. But I'd like to stress that if you adjust the number for the COVID impact, the underlying performance is very good. So as Allianz, we're going to keep uh, focus on delivering on our agenda, on delivering on the underlying performance, and then the impact of COVID is something that we will have to handle as we go through uh, the remainder of the year. Let me ask you about the COVID impact then. Can you give us a little bit more detail and colour on how exactly the corona crisis is hitting the business, whether through claims or in other ways? Yes, when we just look at the Q1 numbers, we have uh, quantified the impact coming from COVID at about uh, 700 million euro. There are 400 million are coming from the property casualty business and 300 million are coming from the life business. On the life business, it's all about uh, the turbulences on the capital markets. When we come to the property casualty business, half of the 400 million losses uh, are from underwriting and they are coming from entertainment. So that's our line of business in our industrial uh, operations. And then to say the other half is coming from uh, business interruption, business closure. We are still other impacts in other lines of businesses, but they are kind of offsetting each other. So I would say entertainment is definitely a driver of the losses that we see in Q1, and also business interruption is a driver uh, for what we saw in Q1. Can we talk about the asset management business? You talk about an outflow in terms of the negative effects on the outflow, 107.6 billion euros and net outflows of 46 billion, mostly in the month of March. Have the outflows slowed down? What can you tell me about the pace of movement from the asset management business? Yes, so we saw outflows in March. As of February, indeed, we had uh, inflows. Then March was a tough month, but uh, uh, that's very important. First of all, what we saw in March is not uh, Allianz or Pinko uh, specific. There was about uh, retail investors going on the sideline. So we can also count that uh, as the markets are stabilizing that these uh, investors are going to come back. On the institutional uh, side, we think there might be even opportunity. And so when we look at the flows in uh, April, but also at the end of March, we saw some stability coming uh, into the, the flows number that we see. So there was pretty tough in, uh, in the middle of March, but then it got uh, definitely more stable. So we, we look forward, coming back to the question you, you just raised at the beginning of the conversation, with some optimism based on the fact that we see more stability. But again, it's too, too early to say how the rest of the year is going to play out. A lot of CEOs and CFOs with you on that, Julio, in terms of the difficulty of forecasting. Um, but nonetheless, in terms of the 2020 outlook, I know you may not be able to give precise numbers or anything like that. But can you at least tell us whether 2020 will come in below last year's operating profit? I can tell you it's going to be definitely below the operating profit of 2019. And I would also say that we, we expect to be significantly below uh, what we had uh, last year. I still believe we are going to have a, a very good operating profit uh, w when you consider the circumstances, but clearly we are going to be short of uh, the numbers that we posted uh, last year. 
That was Allianz CFO Giulio Terzariol. Um, and Allianz shares Roger down 2.7% right now. And again, just really highlighting the difficulty in forecasting and the challenges to their business from uh, from COVID. At least we do know, though, he made very clear that 2020 profit will be significantly below 2019. Yeah, the insurance industry is fascinating in this. And in the UK, it's come under a lot of criticism because some of them are simply refusing to pay out on what they said wasn't envisaged in mm. any of their company schemes. So I think a lot of issues there, certainly politically, that's going to be a massive issue here in the UK in the months and weeks going forward. This is Daybreak Europe. This is Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Retail inflation was probably a no-show in April. Economists are forecasting a nearly 1% decline in the government's consumer price index from March. Oil prices briefly fell below zero last month. A reading on small business optimism is also on the way this morning, with a sharp decline expected. Deputy Chief Investment Officer Dan Suzuki at Richard Bernstein thinks optimism about an economic recovery is overdone. Every piece of data that you look at is still telling you that things are getting worse here, and I think that that's going to continue for some time. So, you know, pricing in this path to recovery already seems a little bit premature. Stocks are coming off a mixed session. The Nasdaq gained nearly three quarters of one percent. The Dow ended lower. Vitamin seller GNC may be the next major retailer to file for bankruptcy. It's looking at the possibility if it cannot reach an out-of-court solution and restructure its debt, GNC has a payment due Saturday. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. If knowledge is power, the Bloomberg Terminal is your power up. Connecting you to real-time financial data, market-moving news, powerful analytics, and an influential network of financial decision makers around the world. Share ideas, negotiate trades, and gain the insight you need to make more informed decisions. See how the terminal can take your workflow to the next level at Bloomberg.com slash professional. IBKR is the professional's gateway to the world's markets. IBKR offers commissions starting at $0 for U.S.-listed stocks and ETFs, enhanced price execution via IB Smart Routing, and access to our powerful trader workstation, web, mobile, and API trading platforms. In addition, our clients enjoy the lowest cost access to stocks, options, futures, forex, fixed income, and more on over 125 markets in 31 countries. Learn more or open an IBKR integrated investment account at IBKR.com. President of the Jewish Communal. Sick of this. We're going to do this doggy style. Did somebody say just eat? Me. Get delivery like a G. See? Hungry dogs got to eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib. I'm sitting in. Burger in the loco. Hope they put the pickle in. Wonton on a catamaran. Oodles and noodles. Thank you, my man. Tacos to the chateau, please. Did somebody say just eat? Private jet in the night sky. My man hand glide by with my fried rice. Why? What could you not love? Bought a slice on the side of the hot tub. Ooh, what you gonna do, boo? Chocolate fondue right on you. Even dipping in the sea. I see food, seafood sees me. J U S T E A T. This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. To help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. Did you know that Players of People's Postcode Lottery have raised over £500 million for charities and good causes? They've also won £63 million in prizes so far this year, and it could be your postcode next. Visit postcodelottery.co.uk slash radio before midnight on the 21st of May to play in the June draws. PPL manage lotteries on behalf of good causes 16+. plus. Conditions apply. Play responsibly. Cook on with Asta with Butcher Selection Quarter Pounder Beef Burgers. Get a four pack for just two pounds twenty eight, and Salmon Fillets. Get a two pack for only two pounds ninety seven. So dinner's always a winner at Asta. We're committed to low prices every day on the quality products you need. 
Foster. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. TSB believe in people helping people. So if you need a repayment holiday on your TSB mortgage loan or credit card, get in touch and TSB will do what they can to help. To apply, go to tsb.co.uk. Interest will continue to apply and you will pay more interest overall. Terms and conditions apply. Broadcasting live to London on DAB Digital Radio. To New York, Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991. To Boston, Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. 8.30 a.m. in London, 9.30 if you're listening in Paris, Frankfurt or Brussels. Good morning, everyone. I'm Neira Chehich. And I'm Roger Hearing, and you're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Roger, sentiment seems to have taken a turn for the better in European equities. 30 minutes into the open, we are three-tenths of a percent in the green on the stock 600. We started in the red uh, just 30 minutes ago. The FTSE 100 now up almost five-tenths of a percent. The CAC 40 and the DAX edge into the green by a tenth of a percent. IBEX and FTSE MIB started positively, and they stay in positive territory extending gains uh, u.s futures still in the red but they're definitely coming off the lows dow and s&p futures off by three tenths of a percent nasdaq futures have recouped the losses to trade absolutely flat the 10-year treasury yield uh, unchanged on a 70 handle we did see a dip in the asian session and we're seeing yields move higher in europe the 10-year bond yield up two basis points negative 49 the 10-year gilt yield up a basis point on a 28 handle um, dollar strength again was the story um, for much of the Asian session, sort of reflecting a risk-off tone across assets. You can see that changing in pockets of the market. The dollar does stay stronger, though. The Bloomberg dollar index up two-tenths of a percent. In G10, the Swedish and Norwegian krona outperforming. It was the yen earlier. The Aussie dollar still the laggard in terms of concerns about uh, China's meat ban, fueling those trade worries. Um, and if we talk about worries, they seem to be dissipating to some extent in the oil market. The oil price has recovered 50% in the past two weeks. Today, we're in the green. WTI up 2.5%, $24.74 a barrel. Brent just above a 30 handle, up 1.4%. Um, so that's the picture across the markets, Roger. The big question in terms of where we go next for global equities as we've recovered about half the losses that we got in that plunge down to March 23rd. David Costin at Goldman saying we could see a drawdown of 18% in the next three months, but then we bounce back to 3,000 on the S&P 500. Right. Well, the big question here in the UK is, what does the Prime Minister mean by his plan to get people back to work? London's Chamber of Commerce is telling businesses not to change their plans until there's more information on how to keep staff safe. Companies are also asking for guidelines on what protective equipment to buy. The government is promising to outline arrangements for public transport later today. Yeah, and we're also expecting today an update on the furlough scheme. Some reports that it could be extended until September. Now, Saudi Aramco has reported a 25% drop in first quarter profit. That's as crude plunge due to an oil price war and the spread of coronavirus. Income for the three months declined to around $17 billion. But the Saudi oil giant says it's still on track to beat its dividend pledge, a full year payout to shareholders of $75 billion. And Elon Musk is reopening Tesla's only U.S. car plant and is daring the authorities to arrest him. The move flouts county rules, ordering the company to stay closed in California. Musk has been furious at the shutdown for weeks, threatening to pull operations out of the state. Governor Gavin Newsom has already sought to ease tension, saying he believes Tesla would be able to restart operations as soon as next week. And PNC Financial is selling its $17 billion stake in BlackRock. It ends a relationship that began about 25 years ago when the bank bought the business from Blackstone. It's still the largest shareholder of the asset manager. Sources tell us the sale is so the firm can better withstand the current turmoil and potentially make another major acquisition. Right, let's get the latest now in global news from Leanne Gerrans. And Leanne, you begin in the place where this whole virus crisis started. Indeed, Roger. Good morning. So we'll start in Wuhan, where all 11 million residents will be tested for coronavirus over 10 days. The Chinese city, where the pandemic began, has reported new infections for the first time since its lockdown was lifted. Six locally transmitted cases were found in people already under quarantine. Now, China's suspending meat imports from four Australian abs- That's fueling concerns that escalating tensions between the two nations are damaging Australia's most important trading relationship. Bloomberg's Ainsley Chandler reports. 
The suspension will start on May 12, according to a statement on a customs website. Australia has stoked tensions with China in recent weeks by calling for an independent probe into the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. Australia is also facing the looming threat of major tariffs on its barley shipments to China. In Sydney, Ainsley Chandler, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Let's cross over to Europe, where after almost two months under lockdown, France is gradually reopening. Bloomberg's Anja Nussbaum has more. It feels like freedom. No need to carry a form when wandering outside. Shops are reopening too. And yet there are many signs that the danger remains. Masks are mandatory in public transport. Many shops require customers to wear them. The pace at which the virus is killing patients and friends has slowed down thanks to the confinement. In Paris, Anja Nussbaum, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And with the spread of the coronavirus slowing in New York, the governor, Andrew Cuomo, says the state's economy is ready to begin reopening, with some regions authorised to do so as soon as this week. Businesses, including construction, retail, drive-in movies and some recreational activities, will reopen in the coming days. New York's the epicentre of the outbreak in America, with nearly 21,700 deaths. Global News 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 27. 700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Roger. Leanne, thanks for that. Let's get back to our top story then. And the confusion that continues to surround the UK government's lockdown easing. It seems to continue today with many business groups have a casting doubt on whether their employees should be going back to work. At the same time, businesses are closely watching the Chancellor's announcement on the furlough scheme that's coming up later today. For more, we're joined by Bloomberg Senior Executive Editor David Merritt. David, uh, thanks for being with us now. I mean, I suppose one of the most striking things, certainly what struck me, is the breakdown in the kind of united front. There seems to have been a united kingdom, if you like, approach to the virus. Politicians, yes, but business, unions, even other constituent nations of the UK now seem to be taking a different tone from number 10. That's right. You know, the truce, if there ever was a real truce across uh, British politics, seems to really be breaking down now, doesn't it? And we had the extraordinary spectacle of the First Minister of Scotland telling everyone in Scotland to ignore the Prime Minister's uh, address to the nation and saying that it only applied to England. Similar noises coming out of the Welsh government and Northern Ireland as well. So differing messages and bizarre consequences, such as news today that police will be patrolling the border between England and Wales, lest um, English holiday makers try to make a dash for somewhere like Snowdonia or Welsh beaches. You know, bizarre um, outcomes from this differing in now in regulations. And, and yet in England still, there is, as you said, a lot of confusion over what these tweaks mean. To encouraging people to go back to work, the Prime Minister now had to sort of change the tone of that again last night after a backlash from businesses. And lots of people really this morning left scratching their heads. Yeah, and David, in the meantime as well, how does the government actually manage the reality that the people most at risk of getting sick or ill are those who are being told to go back to work? And we're talking about construction workers, transport workers, for example. That's right. Studies really showing that it is those frontline workers, people have been going out there to work regardless because they cannot work from home, are the ones most likely to be affected and unfortunately to die from this disease. Uh, whereas, you know, the white collar workers who are very happy to work at home uh, from their laptops, of course, are, are escaping uh, unscathed. That's a very awkward question for the government, um, how they can ameliorate that. And, you know, they don't have um, the, enough answers at the moment saying you know, avoid public transport. If people live a long way from their work. How can they do that? Um, what sort of business, uh, what sort of measures can businesses put in place to make the, these places safe when people can't keep two metres apart? Um, it really is a very vexed question. But, you know, of course, the government has to start getting people back to work because the costs of this are continuing to mount. And as you mentioned, we're going to be hearing from the Chancellor later today on this furlough scheme, six, more than six million million people currently being bankrupt by the government. Uh, that is not sustainable in the long term. Somehow, Britain needs to get back to work. Well, let's pick up on, on that about the chance. As you say, we are going to hear from him a little bit later, speaking in the House of Commons. But what are the, what are the thoughts about what he could actually do? Because he's already said there won't be a cliff edge, but the, as you said, the amounts involved in all this are pretty eye-watering. He's got to find a way out of it that, that avoids problems. That's right. It's a hugely difficult balance the chance to strike on one level he does want to keep the jobs in existence he doesn't want to force companies to actually make redundancies that's what the point of this whole thing uh was um but of course withdrawing 
the support too soon means that people are not going to have any jobs to go back to either. And yet, you know, too long and people perhaps become too dependent on it. It's been extended once already um, for another month to June. It seems like today we're likely to hear from the Chancellor it's going to have to be much longer than that, perhaps mm. until September, until they can wean people off it. Just another sign of how serious this downturn really is. And David, for those people working in the city who may be in some way contemplating a return to work at some point, what kind of guidance is there on working in offices, in banks? Yes, well, you know, we're hearing from some of the banks that, you know, there are obviously lots of plans for how to get people back in. But though it's very interesting because people seem to have adjusted um, to working remotely uh, remarkably well. And just thinking about our own experience, of course, uh, here at Bloomberg, you know, with people reporting remotely, um, that we, it is possible to keep things uh, moving and of course traders have now got those setups at home with all the electronic things that they need so is there going to be any need to come back and take that sort of risk or are well, we going to see a very different sort of environment in the yeah. city of London when this is all over it's going to be very very interesting David thank you that was Bloomberg senior executive editor David Merritt and as we are now 40 minutes into the European opening uh, green mostly but not on the CAC or the DAX at the moment uh, as we move in to the markets not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. At age 30, Carissa finished her high school diploma. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, you can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of volatility and illiquidity, BAM-insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption, like the one we're experiencing right now. BAM. Build America Mutual. Ask your broker about BAM-insured municipal bonds. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their business strategically. Yet, the most competitive managers in the market know, with the right partner and a flexible operating platform, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm Steve Meyer, President and Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com slash seize change. Business is introducing the new single Impossible from Central American rock and blues trio Steady Rolling. It's not Their epic story of love and loss continues. Download and stream the single Impossible from the band Steady Rolling wherever good music lives. Did you know that players of People's Postcode Lottery have raised over £500 million for charities and good causes? They've also won £63 million in prizes so far this year, and it could be your postcode next. Visit postcodelottery.co.uk slash radio before midnight on the 21st of May to play in the June draws. PPL manage lotteries on behalf of good causes 16+. plus. Conditions apply. Play responsibly. half-price dream holiday wouldn't want to miss that a takeaway for free wouldn't want to miss that and 30 gigs data for just 10 pounds a month on smarty mobile you definitely don't want to miss that our smarty sim comes packed with 30 gigs of data and unlimited calls and texts for just 10 pounds a month on a one-month plan that's why smarty won best value sim only network in the U switch mobile awards 2020 
Don't miss out. Search Smarty Mobile. Smarty. Simple. Honest Mobile. Smarty.co.uk This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. To help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. Picture in your mind a stylish Audi with striking LED headlights, sporty alloy wheels, and some of our most advanced features, including a 10-inch digital cockpit and smart assistance systems like lane departure warning. Picture what that Audi looks like. Now think smaller. The Audi A1. It's not a small car, it's a small Audi. Visit audi.co.uk. Audi. Vorsprung durch Technik. For more than 20 years, ASDA supported our communities. We've raised over £23 million for Fair Share and the Trussell Trust. And recently, we've donated supplies to frontline NHS workers and carers. We've always been proud to serve those around us. Visit asda.com forward slash creating change for better. ASDA, we're all in this together. We're all having to get used to the new normal. And at Birkbeck University, we're experts at being adaptable. As London's Evening University, we've been flexing around the lives of busy commuters for nearly 200 years. And you can find everything you need to secure your place for autumn online. From expert advice to virtual tours, a live chat with our students and course applications. Make the new normal, studying for the career that you really want. Search Birkbeck and it's new problem solved. TSB believe in people helping people. So if you need a repayment holiday on your TSB mortgage, loan or credit card, get in touch and TSB will do what they can to help. To apply, go to tsb.co.uk. Interest will continue to apply and you will pay more interest overall. Terms and conditions apply. Typical Danny. Imagine trying to unwind at a spa weekend and you wind up getting your mud pack all over your fave personalised dressing gown. But no worries, just one wash and my clothes will smell perf with Surf. Surf gives you long-lasting fragrance with natural essential oils. Find your fragrance in Surf's laundry range. News 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app and on QuickTech by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Good morning from London. I'm Sandra Kilhoff with this Bloomberg Business Flash. Now, we are seeing European stocks turning slightly higher this morning. The FTSE currently up three-tenths of a percent. The stock 600 gaining two-tenths. The DAX and the CAC 40 fairly flat this morning, while U.S. futures are still pointing toward a lower open. It follows a risk-off day in Asia, where the Hang Seng is still trading and down one and a half percent in Hong Kong. We have seen havens bid as a result. The Bloomberg dollar spot index up two-tenths of a percent. The yen gaining one-tenth of a percent to 107 spot six. Sterling standing pan at 123. The euro at 108 this morning. Similarly so for the offshore WAN holding at seven spot one after a soft inflation print has spurred bets of further easing from the PBOC. Now, U.S. yields are lower almost across the curve. We are seeing the 10-year yield currently down a basis point at 70 basis points. The 10-year bond yield gaining two basis points, negative 49. 10-year gilt yields at 28 basis points this morning. Oil, meanwhile, edging higher after Saudi Arabia announced deeper production cuts. We are seeing WTI at $24 a barrel. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now, here's Len Garrens with more on what's going on around the world. Sandra, thank you very much. A stern warning from Dr. Anthony Fauci. The U.S. infectious disease experts will tell the Senate later today the country risks needless suffering and death if the economy reopens too soon. That's according to the New York Times. Fauci says there's a chance of more outbreaks if states reopen without following White House guidelines. Now, Russia's lifting its nationwide lockdown, even as daily new coronavirus cases surge past most European countries. President Putin is ending the stay-at-home order. Russia's economy has contracted by a third since the lockdown began, while oil's collapse is adding even more pressure. Infections have gone over 10,000 a day for the past eight days. 
And this year's summer solstice celebrations at Stonehenge have been cancelled due to the coronavirus pandemic. Traditionally, about 10,000 people gather at the site in Wiltshire to mark midsummer. The occasion will instead be live streamed on social media accounts. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Naira. Leanne, thank you so much. Oh, no. Oh, another coronavirus cancellation. I could really picture Roger at those summer solstice celebrations, can't you? You're thinking I of can. my beard. I can't beard indeed. is what it is. He just needs I have to a very long and curly beard that has entirely uh, grown during the crisis. So, um, yes. But this is so nice because I've always wanted to go to this and I've never been able to make it because you have to wake up really early in the morning and travel. So now I can watch it on social media accounts and just join in. All right. Well, we'll all be there in spirit. Now, Austria's economy may take a few years to reach pre-crisis level. That's according to Chancellor Sebastian Kurz, who says open borders will be key to jump-starting economic growth in the country and the European Union. Speaking exclusively to Bloomberg's Matthew Miller, Kurz also said Italy cannot handle its debt load without EU assistance. There's a good cooperation on the European level to support countries like Italy, France and Spain. Um, So there's a package of more than 500 billion euros to support these countries, and I hope that this will be helpful. Do you think that'll be enough, or is there going to need to be some sort of shared fiscal union in Europe to to help uh, your your second biggest trading partner? Well, I think that this package is good, um, but we are not in favor of ideas like corona bonds or mutualization of that in the European Union. Even if it costs Italy its European Union membership, I mean, how important to you uh, is the membership of other EU countries like Italy? Well, there's no debate about the membership of Italy in the European Union. Um, We are united in the European Union. There's a good cooperation, and I think that we will manage this crisis and we will also be able um, to manage the economic uh, situation, but of course it will be an enormous difficult year. Austria, Germany, the Netherlands, um, all of these countries were well prepared before the crisis hit, but there are other European countries like Italy and Spain which were already in a bad fiscal situation. How much are you prepared to pay Um, in order to keep the European Union together, in order to save those countries that were hit so much harder? Well, it's clear for us that we want to support them and that we want to show solidarity. And I think it is good that the ministers for finance agreed on this 500 billion euros package to support these countries. And of course, on the European level, among the heads of states, we are also in a discussion if uh, more help is needed. The austerity that you practiced put you in a good position now. But your second biggest trading partner, Italy, has 158% debt to GDP. Is it possible for them to get out of that kind of debt trap? How, how would they possibly do it without some form of debt forgiveness or shared debt? Well, they wouldn't be able to handle the situation without the help of the European Union and countries like Austria. But I don't think that the idea of a shared debt is uh, the right answer. How long do you think, Mr. Chancellor, it's going to take for economies like the Austrian economy to get back to pre-crisis levels? Now that you've earmarked 38 billion euros, um, you've got more measures to come. When do you see us getting back or yourselves getting back to pre-crisis levels? Well, at the moment, it's difficult to say because we are quite dependent on tourism. 15% of our GDP in Austria is uh, tourism. Um, there are some industries like automotive, um, which has have also been hit. So it's difficult to say now, but um, this year, 2020, will be a very, very difficult year. But we hope that uh, at the next year, in 2021, um, there will be a positive development again. But probably it could take us a few years. I know that you're already preparing measures like tax cuts, possibly infrastructure investment, reopening borders with your neighbors. What do you think is going to be the most important move to revive the economy 
on the post-corona side of the crisis? For us, for sure, the reopening of the borders is most important because uh, we need the single market of the European Union. We are an export-orientated country, and as mentioned before, tourism also plays an important role in our country. So for the economy in general, but for tourism in particular, reopening the borders is very important. And that was the Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurt speaking exclusively to Bloomberg. And interesting, Larry, he is just about the youngest senior politician in Europe, 33 years old, Chancellor of a European state. Uh, yeah, it does make you wonder what you've been doing with your life when you learn <laughs> things like that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And um, and look, it's really interesting as well, um, as we've been talking about reopening, we've talked about it in the UK um, so much throughout the show, just the difference in different European countries in terms of the stages and how exactly they're approaching it. But let's talk more about the markets and um, the outlook with Jeff Henriksen, founder of hedge fund startup Thorpe Abbott's Capital. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining. I was really interested to read that your philosophy centers on understanding the behavioral factors behind mispricing. And it leads me to wonder whether with all the uncertainty around reopening, whether we see a second wave um, of infections of coronavirus, all the risks stacking up for investors, whether you are seeing loss aversion theory at work. That, of course, is the theory where people have a tendency to prefer avoiding losses than acquiring equivalent gains. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I would say we've, we saw it uh, in full force, if you will, in, in mid to late March. And so there, the opportunities that existed then are, are not as interesting today, but there's still tons of great opportunities today. And I think uh, and we're probably not close to out of the woods yet. So you're going to see a lot of volatility in the months ahead. And when you see that, especially when the fear that's really driving it is a very – uh, primal fear of of uh, a virus that can kill you. That that, that people are are reacting in ways uh, that, and I've said this many times, that, that the way you act when you want to survive a, a threat uh, is to really assume the worst and avoid losses. Right? That's how you. Uh, that is how you survive in the wild. You assume that whatever that noise is will will kill you, and you run away from it. But when you take that and try to use that same mentality to price risk assets, uh, oftentimes that can make you can make big mistakes. And I think when you see this primal fear driving things, that those loss aversion situations will be more likely to happen. All right, so Jeff, so what's your strategy then? How do you pursue this? So the way the way I look, so so I'll kind of tell you how like March unfolded for us and what we saw and, and, and I think the unique opportunity to uh, that presents itself. And so we saw a flood of ideas and, and we saw our, our fund is, is both fundamental bottom-up approach, but we also use an algorithm to find behavioral mispricing. And we saw a plethora of new ideas in mid to late March. And it's the kind of situation where you can take a lot of little small positions where the, the risk-reward uh, on the individual situations is just massively asymmetric. So uh, I hate to use a, a, a gambling analogy, so please don't think badly yeah. of me that I am, but if, if you were having just a series of coin flips, and every time it came up heads, I somehow got paid four to one or five to one. And every time it came up tails, I was paying you even money. Uh, if on one or two flips, I still might lose. But if we sat there and flipped coins all day, and those were the odds that you were giving me, I would make yeah. a lot of money. And so I think you're seeing a lot of situations where you can take little bitty small positions, uh, diversify away the idios idiosyncratic risk, and really get uh, exposure to what to me to be appear to be really good uh, asymmetric risk reward. Jeff Henriksen. We'll have to get you back to discuss this more. Founder of hedge fund startup Thorpe Abbott's Capital. Thank you so much. European equities in the green. This is Bloomberg. Are you looking for senior care for your mom or did somebody say just me? Get delivery like a G. See? Hungry dogs gotta eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib. I'm sitting in. Burger in the low low. Hope they put the pickle in. Wonton on a catamaran. Oodles and noodles. Thank you, my man. J U S T E A T. Just E. Switch on Acorn TV, the brand new streaming service featuring world-class TV from Britain and beyond. Watch exclusive premieres like the colourful crime drama Queens of Mystery. Once you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. 
and fan favourites like Inspector George Gently. I'm just an old copper doing his job. If you love drama with a little mystery thrown in, enjoy 30 days free with code ACORN30. Then just $4.99 a month. No adverts, no contract, cancel any time. Join online today at acorn.tv. This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. To help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. The idea is to rehold the economy in suspended animation until we get control of this virus. We are very much in a picture of monetary dominance. We will get slower growth. I mean, let's not get confused about that. We are in a national crisis. I think it is for all parties to pull together. The euro area is facing an economic contraction of a magnitude and speed that are unprecedented in peacetime. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe on Bloomberg Radio. Good morning from London. I'm Caroline Hepke. And from the Bloomberg Bureau in Berlin, I'm Matt Miller. You're listening to Daybreak Europe on London DAB Digital Radio. Matt, it's been 24 hours of confusion here in the UK about what exactly uh, the rolling back, the easing of some of the lockdown really means. We Only had 24? This, yeah. Uh, More like well, 36, right? Didn't you start getting confused on Sunday night? And That's true, Tuesday 7 morning? p.m. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My basic math is failing me, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, it is. You know what? The one thing is um, there there is a way to get to work without taking public transportation. You know, this has been a little bit of a debate. Um, what, the but today I, the cycling? I, I got a lot of clients emailing in saying that they cycle to work. I lived for three years in London without ever riding on the tube. I had a cheap little Vespa that I bought used on eBay, and it was the greatest way to get to work. Yes, that's true, but the issue is uh, that the BEIS, so that the ministry in charge of this, uh, issued a warning yesterday as part of this massive 50-page document that we got with the details of reopening businesses, reminding companies, and particularly directors, that they are responsible for the safety of their workers, and so the fear is, okay, we can reopen, perhaps we could stack the start times as is recommended we could clean uh you know and prevent hot desking for example um but we still have to wait what is hot desking hot desking oh do you not know that term it's very popular here in the uk so it just means where um if you're a shift worker you come in and work for eight hours but you share that desk with somebody else who might work Ah, another eight hours you get to swap so yeah it means you, you don't have to use so much real estate for the business but now that's something that they're saying should not be used for companies. So look, it's a sea change. In well, and the, the if the BIS is issued those directives, that it, that directors are responsible. For well, the they always of have been. It's just a reminder, yeah. But does that mean then, if you get COVID nineteen at work, you because your boss asked you to come back, you can then sue? Yes. That is the question mark. If there were to be an outbreak in your business and you didn't take all of the right steps, and that is why businesses, unions and so on, want so much more advice about exactly how they can reopen safely. So that's, you know, the real question here in the UK. Uh, You know, a lot more guidance is going to be needed. Anyway, so the rush back to work is not happening. It is getting busier outside my street, but it's not that busy, uh, I hear, in offices. Uh, Right, let me take you to the markets briefly on that note. Um, Europe, actually, in terms of the stocks, Matt, this morning, we saw a small loss and then a bit of a gain, but now we're back to the flat line. FTSE 100 up by two tenths of 1%, but where you are, the Zetra Dax is down a tenth of 1%, and the Cat Current drops three tenths of 1%. We have bad news from the Bank of France about what they see is the recovery path for uh, the French economy. As for US um, futures, we are uh, down four tenths of 1% for S&P 500 e-mini futures. Goldman Sachs warning investors that there could be a as much as another 
percent drop over the next three months for the S&P 500 in the FX space. Also, we've been watching the strengthening Bloomberg dollar spot index up a tenth of one percent. The euro trades at one spot zero eight, uh, and also some relief in the oil markets a little bit. WTI crude futures gained two point two percent at the moment and Brent crude at $29.87 so also up by eight tenths of one percent so that's a look at the markets Matt. All right so markets are looking for some kind of direction investors are weighing a ton of uh, conflicting sort of um, up arrow down arrow stories today there's a Chinese ban on meat imports from Australia uh <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, that Wuhan will now test everyone in the city for coronavirus. According to our next guest, testing is a function of how fast or slow the economic recovery will be. Now, this may be one reason why President Donald Trump is kind of bragging about getting testing up to 300,000 a day. Finally, um, the U.S. has got its testing in order. Let's go to Esty Dweck. She is head of global market strategy at Natixis. And Esty, what do you think about in the, in, the, in the U.S., for example, have they got testing to a point where we can be confident that things are going to be okay? It, it doesn't sound like it. I, I mean, I think that given the size of the of the U.S. economy, given that you know how many people would need to be tested, I think we're we're getting there, but uh, we're not quite yet there. Uh, I think beyond just testing, I think uh, I think that will be one key part of building confidence. And as you were saying earlier, getting people to feel safe enough to go back to work, go back to restaurants and shopping. Um, and these fears of a, of, a second, uh, of a second wave are not going away for a while. But um, there are still some question marks about whether mass testing is enough, how that can work, uh, if, you know, what you do with these tracing apps. So it's probably uh, even beyond that, you're going to need the social distancing, you're going to need the caution, and it, it means it's going to be a slow process. Yeah, indeed. And I mentioned that Bank of France survey today. So um, they're talking about um, economic activity being 27% below normal in April, basically pointing to just how slow it's going to be to restart economies in Europe. And when you mentioned testing, Matt talked about Wuhan, 11 million people being tested. The UK was struggling to get to 100,000 a day. They're going to try and do 11 million people in 10 days. Um, you know, so I think the testing issue is huge, but also the slowness of how we're going to actually come out of, of uh, you know, the lockdown phase in Europe. Absolutely. It's, I mean, you know, markets have been pretty optimistic about uh, progress against the virus, about reopening plans. And, you know, we, we were in lockdown for pretty much two months, sometimes more, and some countries are still not out of it. Um, but you can't just flip a switch back on. Uh, you see a lot of companies doing surveys of whether employees want to come back, and that's where there's an ability to work from home, of course. Some, some places don't have that, that luxury. Um, but you, you don't have – so there's a will to restart the economy, but there's also uh, this question of can we manage the second wave? And I think that's, that's a big one for markets. Hmm. We know we're going to see more cases. We know uh, – you know, we haven't extinguished uh, this virus. The question is, is it manageable for our healthcare system? Is it, uh, can we keep the cases contained enough or the death rates contained enough that we try to get back to normal? Uh, but so many question marks remain. It's, it's definitely going to be a slower process. Can you, um, can you look at countries or regions that you think are doing a better job of dealing with this? For example, I spoke with Sebastian Kurtz yesterday from Austria, they locked down first, and now they're easing before anyone else. Is that a, is that a good uh, way to uh, place to invest? Do you think, Esty? Well, we we definitely think that the more defensive countries in general are are doing well, uh, and the countries that tend to have been you know first in first out. You've seen um, that China has benefited and has shown some stability. Um, in the last couple of months. So Austria has managed this very well. And it's also an indication that, uh, of course, hindsight is, is easy, but there's one or two weeks difference of, of not locking down right away made a very big uh, impact for the, the way the, the virus played out afterwards. 
Um, so we like Switzerland. We like some of the Nordics. We like some of the, again, these more defensive countries. We think the U.S., um, by virtue of its sector breakdown and having those big technology companies, um, is likely to continue to do well. We, we can see that uh, when you look at this rally, it's uh, uh, dipping the toes and not uh, let's go back into cyclical. So it's growth, it's quality. And again, I think a lot of this goes back to confidence of, uh, in the businesses people want to invest in. So the 20% or close to 20% drop that Goldman Sachs sees for the S&P 500 um, over the next three months, is that something you would agree with or you're concerned about? So we've been saying that, uh, you know, volatility was going to pick up again and that we were going to get a second leg down uh, just because there's so many unanswered questions. And, and while markets do front run economic data, there, we, you know, we don't know the damage yet. We don't know uh, how many bankruptcies we're going to have. We don't know how bad and we're starting to get an idea of how bad unemployment is going to be and what that might mean for consumption going forward. Um so we, we expect the second leg down. Now, my, my concern, and I guess it's, maybe, it's good news if I don't expect it to go that far down, is there are two things. One, uh, it's very consensus. So if everyone expects the second leg down, you know, the market likes to surprise us. Hmm. Um, and the second is so many people missed the rally since end of March because we didn't think that three weeks of a sell-off was enough for this crisis, if you want to, if you want to simplify it that much, uh, and the question is, are people just going to wait for the dip and the next beginning of a leg down to go back in because they've missed on this rally, and that might limit the downside of the rally? So I don't know if we're, I don't know, if, we don't think we'll go back to the March lows um, again, unless something you know massive or un, unexpected happens. Uh, but we we think that we are going to see another leg down. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Thank you so much, uh, SD Dweck, who is Head of Global Market Strategy at Natixis, for joining us. Really good to speak to you on Bloomberg Go Radio and Television. Now let's get over to Leanne Garand with the Global News Headlines. Leanne? Matt, good morning and thank you. Let's start here in the UK where there's confusion over Prime Minister Boris Johnson's plan to get people back to work. London's Chamber of Commerce is telling businesses not to change their plans until there's more information on how to keep staff safe. Companies are also asking for guidelines on what protective equipment to buy. The government is promising to outline arrangements for public transport later today. Now, as Caroline and Matt mentioned, in Wuhan, all 11 million residents will be tested for coronavirus. The Chinese city where the pandemic began has reported new infections for the first time since its lockdown was lifted. Six locally transmitted cases were found in people already under quarantine. Now let's cross over to Japan where the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's government is following the US in speeding up the approval of antiviral drugs. Bloomberg's Isabel Reynolds says this comes as he faces criticism over his handling of the outbreak and its economic impact. Japanese regulators, which usually take a year for drug approvals, authorised the use of Gilead's remdesivir just three days after receiving the application. Abe has also said that Fujifilm's rival drug, Avigan, was in line for clearance by the end of the month. Media polls show the public is unhappy with his handling of the crisis. In Tokyo, Isabel Reynolds, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And finally, as lockdown restrictions are beginning to ease across Europe, for the first time in months, some Spaniards could drink and dine in outdoor restaurants and gather with as many as 10 people in private residencies. Bloomberg's Jeanette Newman reports. Spain's government is slowly lifting its lockdown in the next couple of months in stages and province by province. Spain's two biggest population centers weren't allowed to loosen restrictions on Monday, though. Madrid and Barcelona remain focal points of the country's epidemic. In Madrid, Jeanette Newman, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Caroline. Thank you so much, Leanne Gerrans. Uh, Matt, we've been talking about this all week. I know that you've got your bandana at the ready. I still find it really hard that we're going to have to wear face masks in the UK. So mine arrived in the post yesterday from Playmobil. What kind did you get from Playmobil? <laughs> yeah, disposable mask. And it looks actually 
pretty good. It's made of plastic. It's blue. You have to replace the filter. Probably not as good as the Ed 95 masks, but that's what we went for. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my wife is on me to get an N95, but I like to wear like a motorcycle, like a cowboy <laughs> bandana. Feel like yeah. a like a bank robber, like a kid playing cops and robbers. Um, still, probably not as safe. In any case, when we come back, we'll talk about something completely different: Angela Merkel and the deal between the ECB and the EU. Twenty-five years ago, NJIT graduate Dick Sweeney co-founded Keurig Green Mountain, a company whose incredible innovations changed the way the world brews a cup of coffee. Today, he lectures widely on business leadership and is a strong advocate for NJIT's work to combine business education with the power of STEM. NJIT is definitely fostering innovative thinking for budding entrepreneurs simply because that's the world we live in. NJIT is producing students that have been trained, educated, and given the business acumen to be a contributor to a company. The distinct mission is to develop great STEM scholars. The attributes I've always looked for in team members are heart, smarts, guts, and luck. So we want people with passion, intelligence, courage, and never discount luck. The student coming out of NJIT has uh, has experienced all of that. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. Sudden shock or sustained slowdown? When uncertainty threatens, shareholders look to the C-suite to maintain profitability. And for two decades, the leaders of Fortune 500 and Global 2000 companies have turned to GEP for results. GEP's procurement and supply chain solutions help reduce costs, improve performance, and boost EBITDA, helping great companies stay on track and primed for the next phase of the business cycle. GEP, helping the world's best companies do better. You know your body, and you know when something's off, when something doesn't feel quite right. Don't ignore symptoms like fatigue, joint pain, rashes, and fever. They could be signs of lupus. Listen to your body. Take care of yourself. We're here to help you take control of your health. Learn how at BeFierceTakeControl.org. Brought to you by the Lupus Foundation of America and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Rishad Salamat. Let's get over to Dwee for Evans, the State Street Global Markets Head of Asia and Pacific Macro Strategy. Dwee for tell us during this whole pandemic and at the moment what prism you're looking at the markets through and where are we going? The prism that we're actually looking through right now is trying to understand uh, maybe what investors are doing, trying to understand where we're seeing the flow of money return. Uh, and dare I say, to my very first point, that again looks a very sort of mixed picture. So markets, equity markets, have rebounded well, of course. But uh, in the conversations that I have with investors, and certainly some of the metrics that we're seeing at State Street, um, there is not a great deal of love for this rally. And people are very cautious and very skeptical that um, if, for example, we see a, a, another wave of cases in the pandemic, or if we see much weaker numbers than expected, then a lot of the rally in equities may have been built on sand. And obviously the earnings numbers that have come out recently have suggested that uh, we're some way away from a recovery. So what we're looking at now is we're trying to understand whether there's really any real sort of legs behind this rally in equities in particular. Uh, we think there is in certain sectors, but we still think here that caution is a watch we're going forward. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on QuickTake by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Good morning from Bloomberg's World Headquarters in New York City. I'm Anne-Marie Hordern with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. Mixed session across global equities this Tuesday morning. U.S. equity futures and S&P 500 minis are in the red, down nearly three-tenths of a percent, under some pressure after last night, some fresh trade concerns uh, weighing on those U.S. futures. In Europe, for the most part, we are in the green across the major indices. We're a little bit lower on the CAC 40 in France. The stock 600, the benchmark index, up two-tenths of a percent, being lifted by telecom. 
telecom and healthcare uh, stocks this morning. One thing, though, investors are starting to question the equity rally we've seen as we witness really tragic economic data and, for the most part, poor corporate results. In the bond market, we have European yields ticking higher. In Germany, up 1.9 basis points. And then in currencies this morning, we have the euro dollar, dollar one spot 08. The U.S. dollar a little bit weaker against the yen, but we are trading 107.48. And the British pound, one spot 23 this morning. This comes as Boris Johnson uh, faces a lot of backlash and criticism about what exactly the government wants to do in terms of the reopening and what are the rules. That's Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Garrens with more on what's going on around the world. Good morning, Leanne. Good morning, Anne Marie, and thank you very much. In the U.S., they have won the battle to ramp up its virus testing capacity. That's according to President Donald Trump. More than 300,000 daily tests are being conducted as of Thursday, according to the COVID tracking project. But his news conference also saw a testy exchange with reporters. Deaths in the U.S. have now topped 80,000. Russia is lifting its nationwide lockdown even as daily new cases surge past most European countries. President Vladimir Putin is ending the stay-at-home order. Russia's economy has contracted by a third since the lockdown began, while oil's collapse is also adding even more pressure. Infections have topped 10,000 a day for the past eight days. And finally, in South Korea, the Come Forward, Get Tested strategy, which has helped contain the coronavirus, has now run into an obstacle, and that's homophobia. Following an outbreak linked to clubs, several of them frequented by gay customers, house officials are trying to track more than 5,000 500 people, but more than half remain out of reach. This morning, 101 new confirmed cases were linked to the nightclubs. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Bloomberg Opinion, informed perspectives and expert data-driven commentary on breaking news. It's 9.20 in the city. Time to check in with Bloomberg Opinion. We're joined by opinion columnist Ferdinando Giuliano, who's writing about the standoff between a German court in Karlsruhe and um, really the European Court of Justice in uh, Luxembourg. Sources have told Bloomberg that the Bundesbank or even local policymakers could be in line to deal with the German judges. Ferdinando, what do we... What do we know? I mean, there's so many uh, different parties you could see as involved here. There's the European Commission, the ECJ, the ECB, the Bundesbank, uh, Berlin, Karlsruhe. What's the What's the story? Well, the story is, this, is that this is a pretty big mess, if you want to put it bluntly. Uh, because, I mean, the, the irony here, as I wrote in an opinion piece last week, is that it would take a couple of hours for the ECB to respond to the a German constitutional court, because all it's asking is for an assessment of proportionality. And the ECB has made this assessment time and again over the last few years. So it's no problem at all in practice. But the point of principle is a gigantic one. Should politicians have greater oversight over the ECB? And should the ECB respond to a national court? Well, if it does, you know, if the answer is yes, then... Uh, this is a whole new world for the for central banking because we would have a politically uh, dependent central bank and a central bank which has to respond to Germany. So it's quite clear that the ECB does not want to go there. Mm. And so other actors have to step in. So Angela Merkel, interestingly, sort of stepping in to try to smooth things over? Uh, well, it is. I mean, uh, I think uh, Germany is in a big pickle at the moment because... Uh, the day after the court, um, you know, issued its verdict, immediately you had uh, Poland and Hungary, which really seized the opportunity to say that, well, their national courts should have uh, a say to over uh, their decision. And remember, Poland and Hungary are into a bitter conflict with the EU over their, um, you know, over the rule of law and whether their, some of their laws, which are deemed undemocratic by the European Commission, should be cleared or not. So Germany, which is really the guardian, as it were, the kind of guardian of the union, is now uh, essentially justifying indirectly uh, the moves by uh, some uh, rather unpleasant uh, governments. And by unpleasant, I mean what the uh, EU has been thinking of them so so far. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, so Merkel is, is in a difficult position. And uh, let, let's remember that the European Commission, which is headed by a German at the moment, Ursula von der Leyen, is now threatening uh, to open a, a formal procedure and case against Germany, yes. uh, which again would be uh, gigantic as, as a move. Exactly, and she reminded uh, Germans of the European Court of Justice, the ECJ's supremacy over the German Constitutional Court. I gotta say, Ferdinando, even if Germany is theoretically the guardian of the Union, that does not go down well with German voters. Well, no, it doesn't. But uh, let's remember that Germany has wanted a very independent central bank. And, uh, uh, and you know, the irony here is that the, the, the Constitutional Court is essentially saying that the, that the ECB is too independent. So even though voters may uh, have disliked what uh, uh, the ECB has done, uh, just as, for example, Italian voters has, have disliked what the European Commission has done on fiscal policy for uh, many years, that cannot undermine a central principle of the, of the euro. And a principle with Germany, with Germany has been so desperate to insert into the treaties. Uh, so I think uh, um, it's important that Germany resolve this problem uh, as soon as possible with its domestic tools and also to just preserve its credibility For sure. uh, within the monetary union. For sure. I think that, you know, the, the one thing is the ECB's policy and how people feel about that. The other thing is the fact that the ECJ is supreme over Germany's constitution. That's something that I think is going to be even harder for German people to stomach. In any case, Ferdinando Giuliano, thanks so much for joining us. You can check out his work and the work of his colleagues by typing O-P-I-N Go on your terminal. This is Bloomberg. With a Bloomberg Business of Sports report, I'm Michael Barr. The British government says tennis courts and golf courses in England can reopen Wednesday, although people can only play with members of their own household. The sports venues were ordered to be closed in March when Britain imposed a national lockdown due to the coronavirus outbreak. Gyms and swimming pools remain closed. Older gamblers, a mainstay of casinos across the U.S., are skittish about heading back to slots and blackjack tables. According to one survey, only 40% of gamblers over the age of 60 said they would immediately return to casinos once stay-at-home orders are lifted. That's much different than what gamblers under 29 are saying, nearly two-thirds of whom would return when they can. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has warned that adults 65 and older are of higher risk of severe illness if they're infected with the coronavirus. And that is a Bloomberg Business of Sports report. I'm Michael Barr. In-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. The Boston Symphony Orchestra presents BSO at Home. While you stay inside, enjoy a curated collection of archived concerts and behind-the-scenes stories from BSO musicians. BSO Homeschool provides lessons for music lovers of all ages. New performances and messages from musicians are added regularly. Enjoy these selections and much more at bso.org slash at home. Asset managers who sees change to launch new... Introducing the new single, Impossible. From Central American rock and blues trio, Steady Rolling. Their epic story of love and loss continues. Download and stream the single, Impossible, from the band Steady Rolling, wherever good music lives. This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. To help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, 
statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. A half price dream holiday, wouldn't want to miss that. A takeaway for free, wouldn't want to miss that. And 30 gigs data for just £10 a month on Smarty Mobile. You definitely don't want to miss that. Our Smarty Sim comes packed with 30 gigs of data and unlimited calls and texts for just £10 a month on a one-month plan. That's why Smarty won Best Value Sim-only network in the U-Switch Mobile Awards 2020. Don't miss out. Search Smarty Mobile. Smarty. Simple. Honest Mobile. Smarty.co.uk Get your cook on with Asda. With Butcher Selection Quarter Pounder Beef Burgers, get a four-pack for just £2.28. And Salmon Fillets, get a two-pack for only £2.97. So dinner's always a winner. At Asda, we're committed to low prices every day on the quality products you need. Asda. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. Where will 2020 take you? Somewhere where people care. About each other. About our planet about creating a better world for everyone and becoming the best versions of yourselves. Join a community of like-minded individuals at the University of Winchester. Make sure to accept your offer by the UCAS deadline and visit our website to find out more. See the bigger picture. Be the difference. Go to winchester.ac.uk. To London on DAB Digital Radio. To New York, Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991. To Boston, Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Good morning from the German Bureau in Berlin. I'm Matt Miller. And I'm Caroline Hebke here in London. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. So, uh, typically at the top of the show, we run you through the data, and there's one data point that I just remembered um, I hadn't checked yet today, Caroline, and I want to hit it pretty hard. So, it's Bitcoin, the price (laughs) of Bitcoin, and the reason that I care uh, so much about this today is I got pitches from so many people last week in the Bitcoin community, of course, I have been active in in the community. You know, I've I've lived on Bitcoin for a couple of weeks. I've done a lot of reporting on it. But everybody was reaching out to me saying, "Oh, the Bitcoin halvening is coming up, mm. and for sure we're going to see huge volatility, probably a giant spike in the price." Because what happens is, um, at a certain point, the amount of Bitcoin that miners are rewarded for managing the blockchain gets cut in half. So you figure um, it's they're gonna they're not gonna make as many, and it's gonna be worth more. But that happened yesterday, uh, and yesterday Bitcoin was down what fourteen percent to yeah. thirteen uh, eighty six thirty six, and now today it's only up one point four percent to eighty seven sixty. So. Uh, this giant spike that was promised to me by everybody on Twitter and Reddit, you know, in exchange for coming on the show to talk about Bitcoin, just has not materialized. Do you have an answer as to why? I do not. Um, it's only happened, I think this is only the third halvening uh, that we've ever seen. And by the way, huh. that's the British way to say it. In, in American, <laughs> I think we just say having. Halving. Huh. Helping. Huh. <laughs> um, so it, we don't have a lot of experience with it historically, but it just hasn't really moved, and we thought it would. Speaking of not really moving, European equity indexes also not doing diddly squat right now, as we say in the U.S. The CAC Caron is uh, barely budged, down five one hundredths of one percent. Meanwhile, the DAX in Frankfurt is up five one hundredths of one percent. So no movement on um, the biggest. Continental indexes, the FTSE is up four tenths of a percent, a 23 point gain to 59.63. And you're seeing bigger gains in the periph. So the IBEX is gaining half a percent in Madrid. The FTSE MIB is gaining three quarters of a percent in Milan. And if you're waiting for U.S. equity indexes to open up, you can't really take much direction from the U.S., uh, from the European trade because we see U.S. futures trading lower, although not by as much. Down three tenths a quarter of one percent for the dow and the s&p 500 the nasdaq future is really doing nothing right now just uh basically unch unch as we say 
as we say on Wall Street. Yeah, very good. Uh, so those are the markets. Um, well, let's talk about one of the uh, top issues, certainly here in the UK, the confusion over Prime Minister Boris Johnson's plan to get people back to work here. London's Chamber of Commerce is telling firms not to change their plans until there's more information on how to keep staff safe. Meanwhile, businesses are also waiting for an announcement later today from the Chancellor Rishi Sunak on the government's furlough scheme. He's going to be speaking in Parliament and we will have that for you live on Bloomberg Radio at lunchtime. Uh, so for more ahead of that, let's speak to Bloomberg's UK government reporter, Joe Mays. Joe, um, really good to speak to you. So what changes do you think we might see in the furlough scheme from Rishi Sunak when he stands up uh, about half past 12 today? I think the wide expectation is that the scheme will be extended. There have been many reports saying that it could be through to the end of September. And this is all because the government has said they don't want the cliff edge in this scheme. They don't want to immediately take people from having 80% of their pay covered by the government to nothing at all. So that's the aim and extension of the scheme. There's also been talk about whether the government might reduce the subsidy from 80% of people's wages to, say, 60%. But we're not certain on that. It might not do that. But definitely an extension of things on the cards. So what kind of advice, um, uh, you know, we've been talking about this confusion uh, now, a state of confusion that we're in for the last, um, let's see, 39 and a half hours since Boris Johnson started uh, talking on Sunday night. What kind of advice are workplaces being given to keep people safe when they come back um, from COVID-19? Yes, so last night the government did finally publish a series of documents setting out advice to different workplaces, including like factories and in the home, and uh, if you're operating in vehicles. And there were things like, you know, keep the windows open if you're in an office, to keep ventilation going to help prevent the spread of the virus, and more regular cleaning of workspaces, no hot desking, closed canteen. Basically, try to maintain that two meter social distancing. A lot of the advice we've been having, but it's applying for specifically to those environments. But you're right that there has been that confusion because the government was implying at the weekend that workers should go back on Monday before this pub- before this advice had even been published. So that was a lot of criticism that came into the government for that. We have that advice now, and now the line is people should go back to work as of Wednesday. So, yes, I mean, that's uh, kind of, well, we're fast approaching that, and there has been confusion, like you say. Yeah, I mean, also because they want businesses to conduct a, a risk assessment and then to, to publish it, um, you know, to, to, to make it available. Uh, you know, and that's one thing if you're a very large company. It's quite another if you've only got a f- you know, few employees. Um, so then h- how, Ashley, do you think people are reacting to the guidance? I keep talking to our traffic and travel guy about, you know, what, what does he um, see as the sort of uptick in, in commuters and so on. He doesn't see very much. What, what are, how are people reacting to it? Yeah, it's critical, isn't it? Because so many weeks now we have that strong message of staying at home, protecting the NHS. I think the government's concern with that message is almost too effective. People weren't going to hospitals if they had other conditions. People weren't going to work even if they could in a relatively safe environment. So I think the reaction so far has been, well, you know, a recognition that a lot of this is kind of common sense, but at the same time concern over seemingly conflicting guidance about things like family. Can you go and see your family? Uh, you know, we have all this advice about going back to work, but very little about what people perhaps care about more, which is seeing their loved ones. That's been a that's been a source of concern uh, in, in in the last few days. And definitely, the government are saying people understand the common sense message, but many in the public are saying, "Well, it needs to be a lot clearer." Mm. It seems like testing is the key to all of this. I mean, I think that's been clear from the get go, Joe. Um, how is the UK? positioned in terms of testing? Are they ready to go all out and really test the heck out of the public in order to get people back to work? I think there's still a way to go. I think we've reached the level of around 100,000 tests a day being conducted, but the government itself is that we need to get that higher, say 200,000 a day. But crucially, we need to have a contact tracing system which can match that testing. As long as like there's no, there's no uh, immense value in testing also people, you can't then trace they are interacting with and who therefore needs to quarantine themselves and isolate stop the spread of Has the, the government virus. hired so, an army of tracers? Well, that's in, that's in progress. They're looking to recruit 18,000 and they have this app which they are trialling on the Isle of Wight and they said they want to bother out by the middle of May. So they're, they're trying to get there but we're still, we're, still not, we're still not in full contact tracing mode yet. There's still a way to go there. 
Yeah, abs- absolutely. And I've read reports that, okay, even if we manage to get to this 100,000 mark, it takes something like 10 days to get the results back. I mean, that's also a significant issue. So, yeah, that's those rubbish. So- Sorry? That's rubbish. No, I mean, that's true, I'm sure, but that's a rubbish. You need to get it down to what we need is like instant testing, you know, like, uh, you know, put a laser in my eye and tell me if I have coronavirus and then I can go into your store and buy shoes or whatever. You know, that's that's where we need to be. That would be ideal. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be a very close possibility here in the UK. Bloomberg's UK government reporter Joe Mays. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. Let's get over to Leanne Garens for the rest of your global news headlines. Leanne? Matt, good morning and thank you. In Wuhan, all 11 million residents will be tested for coronavirus. The Chinese city where the pandemic began has reported new infections for the first time since its lockdown was lifted. Six locally transmitted cases were found in people already under quarantine. Now, China is suspending meat imports from four Australian abattoirs. That's fueling concerns that escalating tensions between the two nations are damaging Australia's most important trading relationship. Bloomberg's Ainsley Chandler reports. The suspension will start on May 12, according to a statement on a customs website. Australia has stoked tensions with China in recent weeks by calling for an independent probe into the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. Australia is also facing the looming threat of major tariffs on its barley shipments to China. In Sydney, Ainsley Chandler, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. The U.S. has won the battle to ramp up its virus testing capacity. That's according to President Donald Trump. More than 300,000 daily tests are being conducted as of Thursday, according to the COVID tracking project. But his news conference also saw a testy exchange with reporters. Deaths in the U.S. have now topped 80,000. Global news 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts and more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Caroline. Thank you so much, Leanne Gerrans, with the World and National News. Now, joining us next is Rick Lakai, CIO at State Street Global Advisors. More than 20 years experience will get his take on the Fed's efforts to stimulate the U.S. economy, where he sees growth going in 2020. Testing, tracing in the U.S. economy. This is Bloomberg. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. No company wants to be involved in an international dispute. But when disagreements arise, you need expertise at your side. Take a closer look at ICDR, the International Center for Dispute Resolution. Backed by the longevity and strength of the American Arbitration Association, the ICDR is the world's leading provider of cross-border dispute resolution services, handling more cases than any other institution. Find out why global expertise matters. Visit ICDR.org. For the Jewish Communal Fund, Noel Spiegel, former senior partner with Deloitte & Touche and past JCF president, discusses the advantages of a donor-advised fund over a private foundation. There's a lot involved in having a private foundation. You need to engage attorneys, you need to engage accountants, file tax returns. At JCF, all of that is done for you. You don't have to get involved in anything other than making your contribution to your fund and then determining which grants that you want to make. A JCF fund may be opened with a minimum $5,000 contribution of cash or appreciated securities and can be used as an alternative to or together with a private foundation. If you have a foundation, you have to list all of the contributions that you made. Potentially, anybody, because the information is public, can find out exactly which organizations a foundation has made charitable contributions to. Let JCF simplify your philanthropy and protect your privacy. Learn more about JCF's private client group at jcfny.org. Imagine. Imagine. Did somebody say just eat? Me. Get delivery like a she. See? Hungry dogs gotta eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib. I'm sitting in. Burger in the loco. Hope they put the pickle in. Wonton on a catamaran. Oodles and noodles. Thank you, my man. 
J U S T E A T. Somebody's name. Just be. This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. To help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. For more than 20 years, ASDA supported our communities. We've raised over £23 million for Fair Share and the Trussell Trust. And recently, we've donated supplies to frontline NHS workers and carers. We've always been proud to serve those around us. Visit asda.com forward slash creating change for better. ASDA, we're all in this together. We're all having to get used to the new normal. And at Birkbeck University, we're experts at being adaptable. As London's Evening University, we've been flexing around the lives of busy commuters for nearly 200 years. And you can find everything you need to secure your place for autumn online. From expert advice to virtual tours, a live chat with our students and course applications. Make the new normal, studying for the career that you really want. Search Birkbeck and it's new problem solved. TSB believe in people helping people. That's why they've created TSB Smart Agent, a new secure way for TSB to answer your personal and business banking questions online. Find out more at tsb.co.uk. Automated service available 24-7. TSB partners available 9am to 4.30pm Monday to Friday. Pauline. Love may be blind, but it has a new smell. Pauline, the new fragrance from Euro Millions winner Pauline Hinchcliffe. Tonight's Euro Millions jackpot is a massive £55 million. Pounds. That's dream come true money. Euro Millions from the National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. Play online or on the app. Estimated jackpot. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. Helen is dreaming of fighting a flock of 40-foot flamingos. But in reality, she's helping fight COVID-19 in her sleep. Like thousands of others, she's joined the Dream Team. By using the Dream Lab app, they're helping scientists speed up the search for potential treatments. I'll fight you. Keep fighting, Helen. Search Vodafone Dream Lab and join the Dream Team tonight. Dream Lab app is owned by Vodafone Foundation, an independent charity. Registration number 1089625. Full terms at vodafone.co.uk slash dreamlab. What do you do to be an everyday superhero? Like Mary. So I know it's tempting to pour used cooking oil straight down the sink, but I spoke to the local council and they said the best way to get rid of oil or fat is to collect it, once it's cooled down, of course, in a used container. And then you can scoop it out and put it in the bin. Cooking oils and fats block thousands of pipes every year. Save our sewers, rivers and seas by putting them in the bin where they belong. Visit thameswater.co.uk forward slash bin it. Together, we can care for the environment. This is a quick message from QuickFit. That sound probably sums up how you're feeling about things right now. But QuickFit won't let it slow you down. If you have an essential journey to make, but your car needs new tires, don't worry. QuickFit's mobile fitting service will come to you. Keeping you safe on the road has never been more important. Visit QuickFit.com to choose your tires and book your slot. QuickFit. Still there when you need them. Headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on QuickTake by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Good morning from London. I'm Caroline Hepke with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. So European equities this morning uh, gaining just a fraction on the US stock 600 up by two tenths of one percent. We've been uh, led higher this morning by uh, telecoms companies uh, and also uh, healthcare stocks, real estate, uh, the worst performing sector. But again, it's really barely a gain. FTSE 100, though, doing a little better, up six tenths of one percent. The Zetra DAX gains a mere tenth of one percent this morning. Uh, Looking over to the U.S. market open, uh, futures on the S&P 500 down two tenths of one percent. The mood has been a little more pessimistic, also partly because we had losses over in the Asian equity trading session, particularly in Hong Kong. Uh, Also, Goldman Sachs Group warning about uh, perhaps a drop of as much as 20 percent over the next three months in terms of S&P 500 stocks. So some people saying that the impact on employment and what that means for the economy has not been fully digested yet. As for the uh, FA, 
index space. Bloomberg dollar spot index stronger a tenth of 1%. The pound weaker two tenths of 1% trades at 123.12 and the euro one spot zero eight as Angela Merkel steps in to try to uh, resolve, lessen the battle between the ECB, the ECJ and the German court. As for the bond markets uh, this morning, what will that court ruling essentially mean for the integrity of Europe? Italian BTPs at one spot 86% yield uh, down uh, one basis point in terms of yields this morning and we trade at 69 basis points for US benchmark yields. Also oil is stabilizing. Saudi Arabia talking about uh, more output cuts. We're up by 2.3% on WTI crude. That's a bit of business flash. Now here's the end going with more what's going on around the world. Good morning. Caroline, good morning and thank you. Let's start here in the UK where there's confusion over Prime Minister Boris Johnson's plan to get people back to work. London's Chamber of Commerce is telling businesses not to change their plans until there's more information on how to keep staff safe. Companies are also asking for guidelines on what protective equipment to buy. The government is promising to outline arrangements for public transport later today. A stern warning from Dr. Anthony Fauci. The U.S. infectious disease experts will tell the Senate later today the country risks needless suffering and death if the economy reopens far too soon. That's according to the New York Times. Fauci says there's a chance of more outbreaks if states reopen without following White House guidelines. And finally, here in the UK, this year's summer solstice celebrations at Stonehenge have been cancelled due to the coronavirus pandemic. Traditionally, about 10,000 people gather at the site in Wiltshire to mark midsummer. The occasion will instead be live-streamed on social media accounts. Global news 24 hours a day on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerens. This is Bloomberg. Matt. Merci beaucoup, Leanne Gerens, there with your Global News headlines. Let's go over Nathan Hager right now. He's preparing for Daybreak Americas. Mm -hmm. And what have you got ahead for us, Nathan? Well, uh, Matt, we're looking at the uh, ongoing push to reopen the U.S. economy during the outbreak. President Trump is all but declaring victory when it comes to coronavirus testing. So he's saying it's safe to get back to work. But as we just heard, that is not likely to be the message we hear from Dr. Anthony Fauci when he goes before the Senate later today. So what should investors take from the potential mixed messaging we're getting from the White House? Well, we're going to talk about it this morning with Christina Hooper from Invesco and Sam Stovall over at CFRA. And we also have cool. Brown. Oh, yeah. And we also have Brown University political science chair Wendy Schiller back with us this morning to get more insights into the government response to the pandemic and whether now is the time to start declaring victory. All that coming up with me and Karen Moscow on Bloomberg Daybreak Americas. Hope you'll join us for it. Matt. I say Sam Stovall is a Wall Street legend. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that, that's a guy who knows every stat ever in, on Wall Street. So it'll be fascinating to have, you know, talking to Sam Stovall, who knows, you know, he's basically a, a Wall Street historian about, um, you know, investing in an unprecedented crisis like this would be yeah. really interesting. I'm definitely going to tune in uh, for that. Always great to hear from him. Nathan Hager and Karen Moscow coming up next on Bloomberg Daybreak. If you're listening in the U.S. on Sirius XM, if you're listening on London DAB Digital Radio, you'll hear Bloomberg Surveillance. Right, let's talk a bit about the markets this morning. Much anticipated move from the Fed uh, as the central bank is starting to buy corporate debt ETFs. It's a key part of its emergency coronavirus lending plan. For more on uh, the US to start with, let's speak to Rick Lakai, who is CIO at State Street Global Advisors. Rick, thank you so much for being with us. Yes, okay, so the Fed is making this move uh, to buy um, uh, debt ETFs, but I think more importantly, it's the idea of, of the U.S. reopening the economy. The U.K. has not done particularly well in terms of the number of deaths from coronavirus here. We look with some bemusement to the reopening in America. What do you make of that, first of all, and, and the impact uh, on markets? Well, I think it's a slow uh, reopening, certainly in the U.K., that we're undertaking. The U.S. seems a lot more patchy. And I think it's reflecting the political situation there, the fact that the president is maybe more risk tolerant than other leaders, for example, in Europe. That might be one way of putting it. Um, but that also there's a clamoring 
in those states or areas of, of America where there's very little virus at the moment uh, to break out from restrictions. But I think it is to largely th through the risk tolerance lens that I would look at this. Where do you where do you see um, <clears throat> the the role of FOMO in this market, Rick? I mean, there's been a lot of talk today about how investors didn't want to miss out, and if we get another dip, they'll they'll go and buy it again. Um, is that part of what we've seen in this in this rally? Yes, I think it is. And bear in mind, the first part of the economic recovery could be quite rapid because you'll have people going from zero to something. Uh, businesses are completely shut, and I think businesses will be inventive in the way that they deal with uh, the safety issues, making sure safety is paramount, but still uh, getting down some business. But you see FOMO through flows into sector ETFs, for example, where people have uh, been putting money into those very visible sectors like healthcare and tech, uh, which have got a long run great growth story, but also in the right place at the right time. So I think people don't want to be left behind knowing that there are still businesses that are both profitable and growing at the moment. Hmm. Are you still confident, though, that we'll see a swift, uh, sharp rebound in the third quarter for the US and for Europe? I think we should be confident that there will be a, the first part of the rebound will be quite sharp because you'll be going from not very much activity at all to something um, that is a long way below normal. And we saw that in China as well, if you look at manufacturing. So the supply side of the economy will have a sharp rebound, but it will be a long way back from where it was in 2019, for example. So the second stage may be somewhat slower. But I think the momentum from the first stage might give some confidence uh, that the second stage in consumption demand would begin to restore itself. But it will be a long, long fall back. Where do you see the best recoveries, Rick? I mean, uh, are countries that shut down earlier going to do better, like Austria? Are countries that did it smarter, like Germany, going to be uh, better places to invest? Are, or is the U.S. still kind of the only game in town with its mega cap, trillion dollar companies? We like the U.S. I mean, I, there, are, there are countries that have had a good pandemic in the sense that they've had their death rate, uh, their population safer than others. Um, but some of them are more exposed to export and trade risks than others. And I think one of the interesting things about the U.S. is that it is a more self-contained and larger economy. As such, it's got more defensive properties in some respects than some of the smaller ones you mentioned a little earlier. So we're overweight U.S. equities. We prefer it to other regions of the world. We do like some of the value opportunities in emerging and in Europe, though. Hmm. Do you think we're really going to transition away from fossil fuels and to renewables? Matt and I like to spar about his love of cars. Uh, I'm not so good behind the wheel, but do you think that it's really going to mean a transition to renewables? I think the transition was underway. The question is whether COVID-19 speeds it, speed it up because there's a more widespread acceptance that prevention is you know, the best measure rather than cure. And I think that's kind of subliminal message out of COVID-19 that if you take steps to avoid risk, they pay off quite nicely. And I think the carbon transition is one of those risks. Now, for many, it's very, very slow moving. Hmm. But I sense that we've turned a little bit of a corner on fossil fuels uh, during this crisis. And also government action is more widely accepted to deal with these large scale risks. So I think we could see an acceleration. I'm a fan of... Uh you know, ESG, I want people to drive greener vehicles or to ride bicycles, just not me. You know, per personally, I want a naturally aspirated V8 that gets about 10 miles to the gallon. But everyone else, I want to do what's right for um, for the globe. Uh, uh, Rick, thanks very much. I'm sure you do anyway. Rick Lakai uh, there talking to us, and he'll be going on Bloomberg Surveillance next, so you can catch more from the CIO at State Street Global Advisors if you're tuned in on London DAB Digital Radio. And if you're listening on Sirius XM, but you want to hear more from Rick, you can just flip over and watch Bloomberg TV on your terminal by typing TV Go, Caroline. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, next up is Daybreak uh, America. New stock 600 stocks at the moment up by two tenths of one percent. And tune in to the Chancellor Rishi Sunak on Bloomberg Radio at lunchtime. This is Bloomberg. Sick of this. We're going to do this doggy style. Did somebody say just eat? Me. Get delivery like a G. See? Hungry dogs got to eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib. I'm sitting in. Burger in the low low. Hope they put the pickle in. Wonton on the catamaran. Oodles and noodles. Thank you, my man. Tacos to the chateau. Please, did somebody say just eat? Private jet in the night sky. My man hand glide by with my fried rice. Why? What could you not love? Bought a slice on the side of the hot tub. Ooh, what you gon' do, boo? Chocolate fondue right on shoe. Even dipping in the sea. I see food, seafood sees me. J U S T E A T. This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. To help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. Get your cook on with Asda. With Butcher Selection Quarter Pounder Beef Burgers, get a four pack for just £2.28. And Salmon Phillips, get a two pack for only £2.97. So dinner's always a winner. At Asda, we're committed to low prices every day on the quality products you need. Asda. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. Today at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak for Tuesday, May 12, 2020. Coming up this hour. President Trump touts the government's coronavirus response as U.S. deaths pass 80,000. Thanks to the courage of our citizens and our aggressive strategy, hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved. The Senate holds a hearing on the response and the push to get America back to work. New York City will remain locked down in June. Plus, President Trump asks the U.S. Supreme Court for sweeping immunity. I'm Michael bar more ahead i'm john stash hour in sports baseball's plan for 2020 includes an 82 game schedule empty stadiums expanded rosters and playoffs and the designated hitter in all games that's all straight ahead on bloomberg daybreak on bloomberg 1130 new york bloomberg 991 washington dc bloomberg 1061 boston bloomberg 960 san francisco sirius xm 119 and around the world on bloombergradio.com and via the bloomberg business app Good morning, I'm Karen Moscow. And I'm Nathan Hager. Bloomberg Daybreak, brought to you by SEI. Today's competitive marketplace requires asset managers to become more operationally adept. See how you can transform your business with SEI's global platform at seic.com slash IMS. And U.S. futures are lower this morning. It is 5.01 on Wall Street, and we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are down about 10 points. Dow futures down 74. NASDAQ futures down 13. The DAX in Germany little changed. CAC in Paris down a quarter percent. The FTSE 100 is up half percent. Nikkei 225. Japan was down a tenth of a percent, and the Hang Seng in Hong Kong fell about one and a half percent. Ten-year Treasury up 4.30 seconds, yield 0.69 percent, yield on the two-year 0.17 percent. NYMEX crude oil is up 2.7 percent, or 65 cents, at $24.79 a barrel. COMEX gold is up six tenths percent, or $10.80, at 17.0880 an ounce. The euro 1.0822 against the dollar, and the yen is at 107.53. Nathan, Karen, the U.S. has prevailed when it comes to the coronavirus outbreak. That assessment from President Trump late yesterday. Thanks to the courage of our citizens and our aggressive strategy, hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved. The president's remarks came as U.S. COVID-19 deaths surpassed 80,000. When pressed by reporters, he clarified the success pertains to testing levels, not victory over the virus. When you have 80,000 people as of today, when you have this, the kind of death you're talking about, when you have potentially millions of people throughout the world, 
that are dying. That's not prevailing. What I'm talking about is we have a great testing capacity now. Data from the COVID tracking project show the U.S. now conducting more than 300,000 tests per day. The administration says that level should soon grow to 9 million per month. In New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo is laying plans to restart business as soon as this Friday. Bloomberg's John Tucker joins us live with the very latest. John, good morning. Good morning, Karen. New York reported 160 new virus deaths. That's the lowest in more than six weeks. That has Governor Cuomo allowing low-risk businesses to resume work May 15th. All retail will be able to operate using curbside pickup. Construction, landscaping, other outdoor activity can resume in areas with low hospitalizations and testing measures in place. And the question is now going to shift more towards localities and regions across the state. If regions see hospitalizations increase, Cuomo says they can ideally slow reopening rather than shutting down completely again. In New York, I'm John Tucker, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, John, thank you. On Capitol Hill today, the Senate holds a hearing on the response to the outbreak and the push to get Americans back to work. Nancy Lyons has more from our Bloomberg 99.1 newsroom in Washington. All the testimony will be conducted remotely because three of the administration's senior health officials scheduled to appear are under self-quarantine after coming in contact with someone infected with COVID-19. They include Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, Dr. Robert Redfield, the head of the CDC, and Dr. Stephen Hahn, the FDA commissioner. Even the committee's chairman, Senator Lamar Alexander, is in self-quarantine after one of his staffers tested positive. That's Bloomberg's Nancy. Nancy Lyons reporting that hearing gets underway at 10 a.m. Wall Street time, and we will bring it to you live right here on Bloomberg Radio. And when we do, Dr. Anthony Fauci will issue a stark warning on the risks of opening or reopening too soon. He tells the New York Times that getting back to work without following CDC guidelines could spark many more outbreaks. Fauci says opening prematurely risks needless suffering and death. In the meantime, the push for more stimulus funding is gathering steam. Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey says a bill is gaining support from Republican lawmakers. The measure would send money to states and counties hit hard by the pandemic. The Smart Fund provides states with $500 billion in flexible funding, with priority given to the areas of our country with the greatest need. That need would be based on infection rates and lost revenue from the outbreak. House Democrats are drafting a plan that could come up for a vote as soon as Friday. As the pandemic cripples the airline industry, a major U.S. carrier will likely go out of business. That's according to Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun, who spoke with NBC News. You know, something will happen when September comes around. Traffic will not be back to 100%. They won't even be back to 25 The Boeing CEO predicts a slow recovery with air traffic at depressed levels for months. It's a similar assessment from Southwest Airlines with CEO Gary Kelly telling us the industry faces a long road ahead. We're going to see a very gradual return of business traffic. That's very typical in a recessionary environment, and that's exactly what we've got. Meantime, in Europe, Ryanair is making plans to restore about 40% of its normal schedule this summer. The carrier will resume almost 1,000 flights a day in July. Tensions with China continue to rise over the coronavirus pandemic. Now the White House is taking steps to block investment in Chinese stocks. Bloomberg's Martin DeCaro is in Washington with the very latest. The Trump administration wants to block a government retirement savings plan from investing in China. Sources tell us the president's economic and national security advisors, Larry Kudlow and Robert O'Brien, made the request in a letter to Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia. In turn, Scalia wrote to the chairman of the retirement plan, telling him to stop putting government employees' money in a fund that includes Chinese companies. Bloomberg News obtained a copy of the letter, which says the administration has grave concerns about investing in China when it comes to both investment risk and national security. In Washington, Martin DeCaro, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Martin, thank you. At the same time, China is stepping up purchases of U.S. soybeans. Bloomberg News has learned Chinese buyers bought over one million tons over the past two weeks. That's after trade negotiators from both countries recently spoke about implementing their phase one trade agreement. And this is Bloomberg. 
All right, Karen, thanks very much. It is 5.07 now on Wall Street and time to check the latest world and national news headlines with Bloomberg's Michael Barr. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Nathan. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio says the city will still be under lockdown in June. De Blasio announced the city is finding temporary homes for thousands who are homeless. They were removed from subways so the cars can be cleaned overnight. De Blasio says that 8,000 homeless adults are in hotels. That's about half of the single homeless adults who frequent the city's shelters. I told you uh, we were going to have a goal of moving 1,000 people per week out of shelters into hotel settings to keep opening up the shelters, to keep making sure we could do proper social distancing. We met that goal last week. We will be meeting it again this week. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy is requesting assistance for federal funds for his state. Murphy says the money would go to police, fire, and EMS services. The governor also called out Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell for his lack of support for states like New Jersey. Unfortunately, there are those in Washington, like Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, to pick a name, who don't seem to get it. These are leaders from states that are all too happy to spend the tax dollars of New Jerseyans on pork projects back home, but seemingly have no interest in helping states like New Jersey at this moment to avert a national economic catastrophe. President Trump will ask the U.S. Supreme Court today for sweeping immunity from Congress and prosecutors. At issue are his personal and business tax returns under subpoena by several congressional committees and the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, which wants them as part of an investigation into hush payments to women. The DA's office said no person is above the law. The Justice Department is determining whether the fatal shooting of Ahmaud Arbery should be charged as a federal hate crime. The Georgia Bureau of investigation charged a white father and son with felony murder. President Trump talked about the shooting during a White House Rose Garden news conference. I think it's horrible and it's certainly being looked at by many people. I'm speaking to many people about it. Uh, he uh, looked, I saw the picture of him in his tuxedo. It was so beautiful. I mean, he looks like a, a wonderful young guy. Uh, would have been a wonderful, uh, I mean, just a wonderful guy. I think it's a horrible thing. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. Okay, Michael, thank you. It is 5.09 on Wall Street in time for the Bloomberg Sports Update. Good morning, John Stashauer. All right, good morning, Nathan. After two months of rumors, speculation about how, when, where baseball will look in 2020, we now know at least what MLB wants to do. Owners will meet with the Players Association today. Details of the plan leaked out an 82 game schedule to start in early July. The DH, even when National League teams play, expanded rosters to 30, expanded playoffs to 14 teams. The Mets and Yankees will play at an empty city field in Yankee Stadium. There will be more Subway Series games, and all the games will be versus other teams in the East, like the Red Sox, Phillies, Nationals, and Orioles. Before baseball returns to the U.S., the Premier League said to be ready to resume play in June in the United Kingdom. Back here, there'll be golf next month starting in texas the colonial there's a nascar race with empty fans this sunday in darlington south carolina but no finish to the american hockey league season and the world baseball classic for 2021 was postponed with no live sports so much attention paid to this espn documentary about michael jordan and the chicago bulls forgive Knicks fans if it's all a painful reminder and forgive nick great patrick ewing um, i played 17 years and like you said, six years, uh, we played against the Bulls six times. We were, only, we were only able to win one of those uh, times, and unfortunately, he wasn't there. So he's been talking trash from the first day that I met him, and he still continued to talk trash, telling me that I, that I have never beaten him when he counts. It was on ESPN. The 10-hour documentary ends on Sunday. John Stash, our Bloomberg Sports. Nathan? All right, John. Thanks very much. Ahead of the open on Wall Street, futures moving lower. S&P futures are down 10 points. Dow futures down 85. NASDAQ futures lower by 23 points. Mixed trading in Europe right now. 10 years up, 430 seconds. Yield 0.69%. Yield on a two-year note, 0.17%. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. I came out in the 11th grade. Nobody was embracing you. The kids were cruel. It was very difficult to be gay. 
Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. The hard part was determining that I was going to do it, but I definitely didn't do it alone. At age 30, with the help of her mentor, Carissa finished her high school diploma. I have a mentor, Maria. She convinced me to continue my education and to finish what I started to get my diploma. She just never judges. She's a true role model. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you are thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their business strategically. Yet, the most competitive managers in the market know, with the right partner and a flexible operating platform, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, president of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. That's why we continually optimize SEI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. If somebody say just me, get delivery like a G. See, hungry dogs gotta eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib. I'm sitting in burger in the low low. Hope they put the pickle in. Wonton on a catamaran. Oodles and noodles. Thank you, my man. J U S T E A C. Just E. Introducing the new single, Impossible, from Central American rock and blues trio, Steady Rolling. Their epic story of love and loss continues. Download and stream the single, Impossible, from the band Steady Rolling, wherever good music lives. Did you know that Players of People's Postcode Lottery have raised over £500 million for charities and good causes? They've also won £63 million in prizes so far this year, and it could be your postcode next. Visit postcodelottery.co.uk slash radio before midnight on the 21st of May to play in the June draws. PPL manage lotteries on behalf of good causes 16 plus. Conditions apply. Play responsibly. half-price dream holiday wouldn't want to miss that a takeaway for free wouldn't want to miss that and 30 gigs data for just 10 pounds a month on smarty mobile you definitely don't want to miss that our smarty sim comes packed with 30 gigs of data and unlimited calls and texts for just 10 pounds a month on a one-month plan that's why smarty won best value sim only network in the you switch mobile awards 2020 don't miss out search smarty mobile smarty simple honest mobile Smarty.co.uk. Berg Television. Here's Rishad Salamat. Let's get over to the three four Evans State Street Global Markets Head of Asia and Pacific Macro Strategy. Dwayne, tell us during this whole pandemic and at the moment what prism you're looking at the markets through and where are we going? The prism that we're actually looking to right now is trying to understand uh, maybe what investors are doing, trying to understand where we're seeing the flow of money return. Uh, and dare I say, to my very first point, that again looks a very sort of mixed picture. So markets, equity markets, have rebounded well, of course. But uh, in the conversations that I have with investors, and certainly some of the metrics that we're seeing at State Street, um, there is not a great deal of love for this rally. And people are very cautious and very skeptical that um, if, for example, we see a, a, another wave of cases in the pandemic, or if we see much weaker numbers than expected, then a lot of the rally in equities may have been built on sand. And obviously the earnings numbers that have come out recently have suggested that 
uh, we're some way away from a recovery. So what we're looking at now is we're trying to understand whether there's really any real sort of legs behind this rally in equities in particular. Uh, we think there is in certain sectors, but we still think here that caution is a watch we're going forward. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. European stocks are edging higher while U.S. stock index futures are slipping and Asian shares dropped as investors weigh an uptick in coronavirus infections in several nations and signs of fresh trade tension. Oil is rising. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are down 7 points. Dow futures down 56. NASDAQ futures down 17. The DAX in Germany is little changed, up less than a tenth of a percent. Ten-year treasury of 4.30 seconds yield 0.69 percent. Yield on the two-year 0.17 percent. NYMEX crude oil is up 3 percent or 72 cents at 24.86 a barrel. COMEX gold is up 7 tenths percent or $11.80 at 17.09.80 an ounce. The euro 1.0817 against the dollar. The British pound 1.2336 and the yen 107.52. Today we're looking for reports on small business optimism out of 6 o'clock Wall Street time. At 8.30, it's the Consumer Price Index. And regional Federal Reserve Presidents James Bullard, Loretta Mester, and Patrick Harker all due to speak at events today. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Coronavirus deaths in the U.S. have passed the 80,000 mark. However, there are signs more states are trying to reopen, including the hardest hit state. Bloomberg's John Tucker in New York has more in this live report. And Michael, in New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo says the state economy is ready to begin reopening with some regions upstate authorized to do so as soon as this week. Mayor Bill de Blasio says the city's lockdown is likely to continue into June. Citywide hospital admissions have declined along with intensive care admissions. New York reported 160 new virus deaths. That's the lowest in more than six weeks. John Tucker, Bloomberg Daybreak. Thank you, John. South Korea has reported a spike in new coronavirus cases. Health workers will test thousands of people who visited night spots in Seoul after detecting dozens of infections linked to club goers. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. Okay, Michael, thank you. We're coming up to 520 on Wall Street Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Brokers Studios. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. And Christina Hooper's here with us now, Chief Global Market Strategist at Invesco. Good to talk with you this morning, Christina. Of course, we saw the rally in April driven by optimism that more states and countries would reopen. Now starting to see a little bit of pullback in markets. Where do you see things going from here? My expectation is that we're likely to see uh, some volatility up and down, uh, that there is no straight path up, but I certainly don't see any kind of dramatic drop for stocks either. I think stocks will be dominated on a day-to-day basis by news flow as it relates to the pandemic, from health statistics to developments in therapies and vaccines to news about more potential fiscal stimulus as well as monetary stimulus. Well, how should investors take the latest news then, then that we got from President Trump where he said that you know we've uh, been uh, victorious, essentially, when it comes to coronavirus testing? Well, certainly we've made improvements. There's been uh, significant progress in testing. We need more, for sure. And so as testing increases, I think certainly that will add to confidence. And we can look to South Korea as an example. Uh, Yes, there was a spike in infection rates, but it was caught so quickly, and the government is reacting. Um, That's the kind of scenario we'd like to see in the United States. That will create greater uh, confidence uh, for consumers to go out and do things once their um, local economies have reopened. Given the way that uh, other countries have responded to the pandemic in relation to the U.S., is now a good time to start looking again at uh, international stocks? 
Well, certainly investors should always have some exposure to international stocks. We all need to be well diversified for the long run. Um, right now, I see opportunities in Asia, EM, and China uh, in particular. Now, these, uh, this is an area that is largely on the other side of this, certainly experiencing slow recoveries. Some Asian economies really didn't get hit hard. They were able to, to avoid uh, the brunt of this, and uh, they're in recovery. Recovery mode. That doesn't mean that it's it's a dramatic V upward, but we're seeing improvement. So there are opportunities there. They're also benefiting from lower commodity prices. Uh, so there's a lot of good things to be said for Asia EM. What about the uh, rising tensions that we're starting to see again between the U.S. and China? This move uh, just last night to block a government retirement fund from uh, investing in Chinese stocks. Does that pose a headwind more broadly for markets? Absolutely. I think that's probably the biggest risk for stocks, not necessarily the pandemic, um, because we have that monetary policy that's created something of a put under stocks uh, when it comes to uh, the slowdown caused by the pandemic. But what is of concern uh, to stocks is renewal of U.S. China uh, tariff wars. And I do believe that will be a big risk through the end of this year. Is the put that we're getting on the monetary policy front driven more by anticipation of uh, policy uh, proposals getting put into place, or is it the actual implementation of things like uh, uh, just this latest move from the Fed to buy corporate bond ETFs? Well, I think it's a combination. It's an understanding that the Fed has bent over backwards thus far in terms of, of utilizing the tools it has at its disposal uh, to combat um, what has happened as a result of the pandemic. But it is also an understanding uh, that the Fed stands ready to do whatever it can to support markets and indirectly the economy going forward. In our last 30 seconds here, uh, given the possibility of more choppiness ahead, where do you find the uh, best chance for opportunity? Well, I think the best chance for opportunity uh, is in risk assets in general, just given um, what we're, we've seen in terms of tremendous monetary policy support. Uh, if I had to pinpoint areas, I would focus on U.S. large cap, particularly tech and healthcare, uh, the more secular growth areas of the market, um, as well as opportunities in Asia, EM, and China. All right, Christina, always good talking with you. Thanks so much. Christina Hooper is Chief Global Market Strategist at Invesco. And uh, just taking a quick snapshot at the markets right now, futures pointing slightly lower with S&P futures down about five and a half points, Dow futures down 46, NASDAQ futures lower by almost 10 points. Uh, European stocks mostly higher with the exception of the CAC in Paris. It's down two tenths percent. The uh, DAX in Germany is a little changed to higher. Ten years up three thirty seconds yield point seven zero percent. Two year Treasury yield point one seven percent. And you are listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. The early market indicators signal caution among traders with an uptick in coronavirus infections in several countries and fresh signs of trade tensions between the U.S. and China. Checking overseas markets, European stocks are mixed. Asian markets finished lower today. Yesterday, stocks closed mixed to start the week. The S&P 500 was mainly little rising less than a point. The Dow fell 109. The Nasdaq was up 71. The coronavirus spread at more than twice the national rate in U.S. counties with major meatpacking plants in the first week after President Donald Trump issued an executive order directing they be reopened. Confirmed COVID-19 cases jumped 40 percent during the week following the order in counties with major beef or pork slaughterhouses compared with a 19 percent rise nationally, according to a Bloomberg News analysis of data compiled by Johns Hopkins University. The meat industry attributes the high infection rates to aggressive testing. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Elite advisory firms rely on BNY Mellon's Pershing to meet the needs of their most complex clients. Karen Novak, Chief Operating Officer at Pershing Advisor Solutions, explains how. At BNY Mellon's Pershing, we bring customized insights and strategies to help you grow your advisory business and stay on the leading edge. We can support the needs of your most sophisticated clients with a full range of investment and wealth management solutions from access to private banking to consolidated bank and brokerage custody. Learn why so many of the largest advisory firms turn to us for the financial strength and high-touch service that BNY Mellon's Pershing can provide. 
Are you well positioned to stand out from your competition? Learn more at Pershing.com or call 800-445-4467. Brokerage custody provided by Pershing LLC and other services provided by Pershing Advisor Solutions LLC. Both members of FINRA and SIPC. Private banking and bank custody provided by BNY Mellon NA. Member FDIC. Jenny Liss, Jewish. Did somebody say just eat? Me, get delivery like a she. See, hungry dogs gotta eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib. I'm sitting in. Burger in the low low. Hope they put the pickle in. Wonton on a catamaran. Oodles and noodles. Thank you, my man. J U S T E A T. Did somebody say just eat? Switch on Acorn TV, the brand new streaming service featuring world-class TV from Britain and beyond. Watch exclusive premieres like the colourful crime drama Queens of Mystery. Once you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And fan favourites like Inspector George Gently. I'm just an old copper doing his job. If you love drama with a little mystery thrown in, enjoy 30 days free with code ACORN30. Then just $4.99 a month. No adverts, no contract, cancel any time. Join online today at acorn.tv. This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. To help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. Picture in your mind a stylish Audi with striking LED headlights, sporty alloy wheels, and some of our most advanced features, including a 10 cockpit and smart assistant systems like lane departure warning. Picture what that Audi looks like. Now think smaller. The Audi A1. It's not a small car, it's a small Audi. Visit audi.co.uk. Audi. Vorsprung durch Technik. Get your cook on with Asta. With Butcher Selection Quarter Pounder Beef Burgers. Get a four pack for just £2.28. And Salmon Fillets. Get a two pack for only £2.97. So dinner's always a winner. At Asta, we're committed to low prices every day on the quality products you need. Asta. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. From the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York, Bloomberg 1130, to Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991, to Boston, Bloomberg 1061, to San Francisco, Bloomberg 960, to the country, Sirius XM Channel 119, and around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. And it's 5.30 on Wall Street. Good morning. I'm Karen Moscow. And I'm Nathan Hager. Bloomberg Daybreak is brought to you by SEI. Challenges highlight one's character, partnership, and resilience. At SEI, they act as one community with their clients. Go to SEIC.com slash banks. We're just about four hours away from the opening of U.S. trading. Let's get you up to date on the news you need to know at this hour. S&P futures are lower this morning as U.S. fatalities from COVID-19 top 80,000. The White House is ramping up efforts to test for the virus as President Trump touts the government's response to the pandemic. Thanks to the courage of our citizens and our aggressive strategy, hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved. Data show the U.S. is now conducting more than 300,000 coronavirus tests per day. New York State is laying plans to restart business as soon as this Friday. Bloomberg's John Tucker joins us live with the very latest. Good morning, John. Good morning, Nathan. Governor Andrew Cuomo is reporting the lowest number of deaths in more than six weeks. And that has the state allowing low-risk businesses to resume work May 15th. We're Starting right. Friday, all retail, all retail will be able to operate using curbside pickup. Construction, landscaping, and other outdoor activity can resume in areas with low hospitalizations and testing measures in place. In New York, I'm John Tucker, Bloomberg Daybreak. 
All right, John, thank you. On Capitol Hill, the push for a fourth round of stimulus is gathering steam. House Democrats are crafting a bill that includes more than $2 trillion in funding, and the measure could come up for a vote as soon as Friday. Well, tensions with China continue to rise over the coronavirus pandemic. Now the White House is taking steps to block U.S. investment in the country. Sources tell us the administration is pushing to stop a government retirement savings plan for moving $50 billion into a fund that includes Chinese equities. In California, Elon Musk has restarted production at Tesla's car plant despite warnings from county officials. And we get more in this story from Bloomberg's Mark Mills. The Tesla CEO is doing battle over measures to contain a virus that he downplayed starting in January. After claiming COVID-19 wasn't all that viral a disease, then calling panic about it dumb in March, he's also theorized fatality rates are overstated and wrongly predicted that new cases would be close to zero by the end of April. In a tweet Monday, Musk said, I will be on the line with everyone else. If anyone is arrested, I ask that it only be me. Mark Mills, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Mark, thank you. S&P futures are down about five points. Dow futures down 38. NASDAQ futures down 10. The 10-year Treasury up 3.30 seconds, yield 0.70%. And the yield on the two-year, 0.17%. The euro, 1.0818 against the dollar. And straight ahead, the latest world and national news. And this is Bloomberg. All right, Karen, thanks. It's 533 on Wall Street, and Michael Barr has more on what's going on around the world. Michael? Thank you very much, Nathan. While parts of New York State are set to reopen, New York City will remain in lockdown in June. However, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio says the downward trend of COVID-19 indicators is a start, but it needs to be consistent. He announced that the three main daily indicators, hospitalizations, the percentage of people who have tested positive, and the amount of people who entered the intensive care unit are down. This is exactly the kind of day we want to see. Now let's see if we can stretch a number of these days together, and that will be the signal that it's time to start talking about relaxing some of these restrictions. Meanwhile, dozens of children in New York City are being sickened by a mysterious inflammatory illness doctors say might be connected to COVID-19. New Jersey is one of many states asking for more funding from the federal government, especially for first responders and those on the front lines. Governor Phil Murphy talked about the urgency. A f- fiscal disaster is not months away. Hard and unpalatable decisions are being made in the here and now. They'll be on our doorstep in just a few weeks. New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez said he is co-sponsoring a bill with Republican Cassidy, Bill Cassidy of Louisiana, that would set aside $500 billion for states. President Trump tweeted that the great people of Pennsylvania want their freedom now and that the state should be safe, move quickly. The state's Democratic Governor Tom Wolf responded to the president. I don't know how you stay safe and and move quickly. The irresponsible thing to do, as I said earlier, is to just willy-nilly go off and Uh, pretend that we can wave a magic wand and go back into business and suspend uh, the reality of this virus that's surrounding us. Today, the Supreme Court hears cases over subpoenas for President Trump's financial records. More with Bloomberg's June Grasso. The high court will hear back-to-back arguments on President Trump's efforts to block his banks and accountants from complying with subpoenas from House Democrats and a New York grand jury. Three House committees say they're conducting oversight and pursuing legislative goals, but President Trump's lawyers say it's a fishing expedition. In the grand jury case, Trump contends the president has complete immunity from criminal investigations while in office. Lower court rulings have upheld the subpoenas. June Grosso, Bloomberg Daybreak. Global news 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. All right, Michael, thanks. It's 535 on Wall Street. Time for the Bloomberg Sports Update. Here's John Stanshaw. Nathan, get ready for the shortest baseball season since the 1870s. The details of the proposal that will be officially sent today from MLB. The Players Association have been learned it's an 82-game schedule, so the equivalent of an NBA and NHL season, one game more than half a normal baseball regular season. There'll be a two- to three-week, not spring, but summer training to start in June with an opening day for early July, maybe even July 4th. 
games will be played at team's empty stadiums. Expanded playoffs from 10 to 14 teams with two getting first round buys. Expanded rosters likely to 30. Teams will only play other teams in their region, East, Midwest, or West. And for the first time ever, when two National League teams face each other, they will use the designated hitter, something American League games have had for 47 years. We'll see what the union has to say about all this. They are said to have concerns about whether there'll be enough testing for the virus and, of course, about how much money they are going to make. Dr. Fauci spoke with NBC's Peter King about football. He said he could envision some fans being allowed into stadiums by the fall, but he also said football players in such close contact on every play, that's the perfect setup for spreading the virus. May 12th, the state of New York sports history, 1996. Yankees beat the White Sox 9-8, a game where they trailed 8-0. That team had a knack for comebacks. They would go on to win the World Series, help by Game 4 win in Atlanta when they trailed 6-0. John Stashower, Bloomberg Sports, made it. Hey, John, thanks. It is 537 on Wall Street and time for the Tri-State Business Report. Here's Bloomberg's Ed Corey. More than $115 million was raised last night during a virtual telethon to support New Yorkers impacted by COVID-19. The one-hour benefit was presented by the New York-based poverty-fighting organization Robin Hood and iHeart Media. The money will go toward food, shelter, cash assistance, mental health, legal services, and education. Many business owners are looking to insurance providers for coverage of COVID-19-related losses, but policies for business interruption typically require some sort of physical damage to an insured property. New Jersey, New York, Ohio, and other states have introduced bills that would remove that property damage dispute. Well, hair salons are part of Connecticut's Phase 1 reopening, which is set to begin May 20th. To make that easier, the state has reversed a restriction originally put in place for salon reopening and will allow salons to use hair dryers. That's your Bloomberg Dry State Business Report. I'm Ed Corey. Okay, Ed, thank you. It's 538 on Wall Street. Bloomberg Radio is on the air from San Francisco to New York, London to Hong Kong. Let's check in with our global news team for some of the top stories heard on our 300 affiliate radio stations around the world. I'm Courtney Donahoe on KTRH in Houston. The threat of an oil storage blowout has receded in the past few days. I'm Jeff Bellinger, and on W. In Cincinnati, I'm reporting that airlines have cut their schedules so much that some flights are too crowded for social distancing. I'm Steve Podeskan on KNX in Los Angeles. We're talking about Tesla reopening its California assembly plant, daring authorities to arrest him. I'm Caroline Hepke on Bloomberg DAB Digital Radio in London. We're reporting on confusion and doubt about the government's plans to end the lockdown. I'm Gina Cervetti, and for WBBM in Chicago, I'm reporting that Northwestern University University facing a $90 million budget shortfall, plans to furlough about 250 staffers. I'm Ed Corey on WWJ in Detroit. I'm reporting Toyota warns profit could fall to a nine-year low. Those are some of the stories our 2,700 Bloomberg journalists and analysts are working on this morning around the world. It is 539 on Wall Street, and the latest edition of Bloomberg Business Week is online now with the cover on Instacart's frantic push to deliver groceries in the age of COVID-19. Terminal customers can receive a complimentary subscription at MAG Go. And listen to Business Week with Carol Basser and Jason Kelly right here on Bloomberg Radio or watch it on YouTube weekdays from 2 to 6 p.m. Wall Street time. Get global business, finance, and tech news on your TV, computer, or mobile device. Just visit YouTube.com and search Bloomberg Global News. Now, some other stories we're following. The CEO of Boeing is predicting a major U.S. airline will likely go out of business this year. Dave Calhoun tells as NBC News, he sees a slow recovery for the industry with air traffic at depressed levels for months. Hertz is casting doubt on its ability to continue as a going concern. The rental car company says it may not have enough cash on hand to pay lenders. Hertz has been hammered by travel restrictions and missed a lease payment on some of its cars last week. And oil giant Saudi Aramco is staying on track to pay out $75 billion in dividends this year, despite reporting a 25% drop in first quarter profit. That dividend is crucial for Saudi Arabia. It owns 98% of Aramco. This is Bloomberg. 
Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then go to Babbel.com, download the app, and try it for free. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just go to Babbel.com and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or go to Babbel.com and try it for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, makes innovation happen. NJIT faculty mentored Christoph Camacho when he was a student helping him co-found a startup and patent a device that uses drone technology for reforestation and to collect valuable data for land management. I founded Paratrees back in 2016, taking what I learned from my research at NJIT and migrating it to uh, a startup. Our technology is to really enhance land management operations, so we work very closely with land management companies. So we have a drone that performs precision reforestation, and uh, we do storm damage assessment. Having access to drones that can collect data, so it's much faster. And what is more important, we help them drive management decisions. NJIT has been there every step of the way, going full force with my company. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. This is your blue... Oh, 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 oh. It's somebody Sick of this. We're going to do this doggy style. Did somebody say just eat? Me, get delivery like a G. See, hungry dogs got to eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib. I'm sitting in. Burger in the low low. Hope they put the pickle in. Wonton on a catamaran. Oodles and noodles. Thank you, my man. Tacos to the chateau. Please, did somebody say just eat? Private jetting in the night sky. My man hand glide by with my fried rice. Right? What could you not love? Bought a slice on the side of the hot tub. Ooh, what you gon' do, boo? Chocolate fondue right on shoe. Even dipping in the sea. I see food, seafood sees me. J U S T E A T. Just This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. To help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. Did you know that Players of People's Postcode Lottery have raised over £500 million for charities and good causes? They've also won £63 million in prizes so far this year, and it could be your postcode next. Visit postcodelottery.co.uk slash radio before midnight on the 21st of May to play in the June draws. PPL manage lotteries on behalf of good causes 16+. plus. Conditions apply. Play responsibly. half-price dream holiday wouldn't want to miss that a takeaway for free wouldn't want to miss that and 30 gigs data for just 10 pounds a month on smarty mobile you definitely don't want to miss that our smarty sim comes packed with 30 gigs of data and unlimited calls and texts for just 10 pounds a month on a one-month plan that's why smarty won best value sim only network in the u switch mobile since 2020 don't miss out search smarty mobile smarty simple honest mobile smarty.co.uk on air and at tiktok on twitter powered by more than 2700 journalists and analysts in over 120 countries this is bloomberg radio now a global news update special report coronavirus update the house could vote on a new coronavirus stimulus bill as early as this week but senate passage is in doubt senator mitch mcconnell as majority leader sets the floor schedule in the senate says there isn't yet a
need for more stimulus. Senator McConnell says he's been in constant communication with the White House about the federal government's response to the coronavirus pandemic. And he tells reporters, in his words, we're basically assessing what we've done already. McConnell adds the need for a bill could develop over time, but that time has not yet come. The House, meanwhile, is working on another massive bill that includes, among other things, aid to state and local governments, to businesses, and to individual taxpayers. Linda Kenyon, Washington. Federal officials say the COVID-19 outbreak has unleashed a wave of fraud. The Department of Homeland Security has opened more than 300 cases in recent weeks that include counterfeit products as well as fake tests for the virus. I'm John Trout. Tom Keen and Jonathan Farrell. Is that good for American finance? What is happening with the headcount? Right where it counts. Bloomberg Surveillance. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg. The world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. European stocks are edging higher this morning. U.S. stock index futures are slipping. Asian shares dropped as investors weigh an uptick in coronavirus infections in several nations and signs of fresh trade tension. Oil rising. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures down about 10 points. Dow futures down 69. NASDAQ futures down 22. The DAX in Germany is down about two-tenths of a percent. Ten-year Treasury, little change. Yield 0.70 percent. The Yield in the two-year, 0.17 percent. NYMEX crude oil is up 3.1 percent, or 74 cents at 24.88 a barrel. And COMEX gold is up six tenths percent, or nine dollars fifty cents at 17.0750 an ounce. The euro 1.0818 against the dollar. British pound 1.2327, and the yen 107.55. Today we are looking for reports on small business optimism out in about 13 minutes from now at 8:30. It's the Consumer Price Index. That's 8:30 Wall Street time and regional fed presidents james buller loretta mester and patrick harker all scheduled to speak at events today that's a bloomberg business flash now here's michael barr with more on what's going on around the world michael karen president trump touted coronavirus testing even as public health experts have warned the u.s still lacks adequate capacity for widespread testing more than eighty thousand people in the u.s have died from covid19 the democratic national committee is considering allowing delegates to the nominating convention to participate participate remotely to protect the public safety amid the pandemic. Virginia will exempt religious services from the state's current ban on public gatherings of more than 10 people. President Trump will ask the U.S. Supreme Court today for sweeping immunity from Congress and prosecutors. In oral arguments in three separate cases, President Trump will claim the demands of the presidency mean he cannot be subjected to subpoenas or any criminal process while in office. The argument has been rejected every time as the president fights efforts to obtain his tax records. Global News 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. John. Michael, thank you. 549 on Wall Street. We are live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. Good morning. I'm John Tucker. There are COVID-19 symptoms you may be aware of, but as it turns out, there are a number of symptoms that you may not be familiar with. Bloomberg's Jason Gale is writing about this this morning. He joins us now from Melbourne, Australia. Jason, thanks for being with us. What are some of the lesser-known symptoms, and how serious are they? Hi, John. Yes, well, we first thought of this as being a disease uh, predominantly uh, causing viral pneumonia, and we subsequently learned that it can cause diarrhea and gastrointestinal upset, and then, of course, anosmia and dysgeusia that's um, for the uh, loss of the sense of smell and taste. And now we've... Um, uh, come to understand that it's causing um, uh, lots of clots in the blood, uh, and these can manifest as something known as COVID toe, where uh, the toes uh, and feet um, can develop rashes and uh, skin lesions, a little bit like chill blains, um, uh, which are fairly benign and superficial and go away, but to more serious complications, um, things like pulmonary emboli, um, which uh, are clots in the, in the arteries of the lung, um, which can cause cardiac failure. Yeah, um, very serious complication there. Um, but we also see that uh, these um, mini clots in the bloodstream can uh, cut off blood supply to the um, various organs. Um, we've seen some younger folks with uh, stroke, for example, um, but also seen uh, even things like um, 
pregnant women and their placentas uh, developing uh, clots, which has um, resulted in uh, a decrease in blood supply to the fetus, which is obviously quite dangerous for uh, for pregnant women and their and their unborn babies. So this all more than suggests permanent damage for survivors of the underlying viral infection, doesn't it? Well, uh, there. Are are going to be some lingering effects of uh, of a severe case um, of uh, of COVID nineteen. We know that it can cause scarring of the lungs, but um, sometimes these blood clots, if they're not treated, uh, and the treatment is very simple, it's with anticoagulant medicines and clot busting drugs. If that um, if these clots are not uh, detected and not treated, uh, then they can linger and then they can cause complications um, in the, in the week, the days to, to months um, after someone has recovered from their viral infection. Well, what, if anything, does this say or suggest about the treatment regimen, that it's it's not just one treatment? Yeah, so uh, obviously we're trying to tackle the virus by using uh, antiviral medicines. We've heard of um, success with remdesivir, but now physicians are uh, recognizing that they need to be on the alert for these clots. So they take a simple uh, blood test called the D-dimer test, and they look for uh, for markers um, suggestive of the formation of clots in the blood, and then they are prescribing anticoagulant medicines like heparin to, um, to essentially thin the blood to prevent these clots from causing problems. Yeah, as we know, the, the human immune system is, is an absolute marvel, but uh, in some cases the uh, human immune system can act against you. Absolutely. We, we know that uh, the immune system can go into hyperdrive and be uh, what is actually causing a lot of damage in some cases. And that's what we think um, might be happening, causing these clots, um, that the inflammation um, around the alveoli, that are the grape-like air sacs in the lungs um, through which all the uh, uh, gases exchange um, through the blood, uh, they can get damaged and the capillaries surrounding those um, can also uh, get damaged in the lining of, of those capillaries. Uh, can um, be disrupted, and that can be where the clots form, and, um, yeah. and then setting off a cascade in the in the bloodstream. Something to think about. Bloomberg senior editor Jason Gale joining us from Melbourne. Thanks very much, Karen. Back to you. All right, John, thank you. It is 5.53 on Wall Street. It's time for the Bloomberg Law Report. It's brought to you by American Arbitration Association. Business disputes are inevitable. Resolve faster with the American Arbitration Association, the global leader in alternative dispute resolution for over 90 years. More at ADR.org. Let's get to the legal stories we're watching this morning from Bloomberg's Jeff Bellinger. A federal circuit panel pressed Google about why the company believes its virtual reality technology deserves a patent. Google is challenging the rejection of its patent application. The Seventh Circuit ruled that TransUnion is not required to determine the validity of disputed debts. Borrowers have to take their credit report issues to the lenders and not the credit reporting agency. Stage stores won bankruptcy court approval to use available cash to conduct store closing sales and market its businesses to potential buyers. Bloomberg Law. Everything you need on one legal research platform. Guidance, analysis, and Bloomberg Market Intelligence. Find out more at BloombergLaw.com. And now, another legal story we're watching. The Supreme Court seeming wary of giving religious organizations a sweeping exemption from lawsuits. The justices heard appeals from two Roman Catholic schools fighting discrimination claims after firing teachers. For more on the lawsuits, Bloomberg student Grasso speaks to Richard Garnett, a professor at Notre Dame Law School. The justices were asking lawyers on both sides, well, you know, what about this kind of case? Or, you know, what if you have a teacher who does, you know, religion for two hours a day, but is also a gym coach? Or what if you have somebody who's a, they're a Lutheran person at a Catholic school who says grace before meals? You know, I think for, for one side of the case, they wanted to show these hypotheticals, like, look, this thing could sweep really broadly. And, and would that undermine the importance of anti-discrimination law? The other side was trying to make the point, I think, that, look, we don't want secular courts getting in the business of of making these kind of fine grain distinctions based on how many minutes a day a person might spend teaching math versus teaching catechesis and theology. And, and you can't make it just depend on the label because there are some religious denominations that don't have ordination and don't call people
people ministers. And so the arguments at the end of the day were really about the difficulty of line drawing. There was a lot of consensus at the level of high principle, right? Religious freedom is important. Religious institutions should get to govern themselves and decide who their ministers are. We don't want secular courts involved in these decisions. There seemed to be a fair bit of agreement on those points. Do you see them drawing a line? What do you see them doing? No, I, I don't. I, I, I just really just don't think there's a line to be drawn. I mean, they declined to draw one in the Hosanna Tabor case eight years ago, and I don't think they'll draw one now. It's more a question of kind of the, the vibe of the approach. And I think that what's really in play is just how much deference we tell lower courts that they're supposed to be extending to the religious employers. And the flip side is the people who want a narrower version of the ministerial exception, they want to put out certain markers, you know, like you, you have to have a certain title or you have to have a certain kind of training or you have to have a certain kind of certification or you have to spend a certain amount of time teaching religious subjects. And I just don't think the court is going to want to do that because with respect to any of those bright lines, you could think of cases that wouldn't satisfy them. I suspect we're going to end up, frankly, probably where we were after Hosanna Tabor, which is just that there's a lot of factors to be considered. We don't want to have a one-size-fits-all thing because we have religious diversity in this country, but that the basic principle is one that respects both free exercise values, that is, we think religious communities have a free exercise of religion right to pick their own ministers. And also this kind of church-state separation concern where we really don't want employment discrimination lawsuits to become a, a mechanism where secular courts are kind of digging into internal religious decisions about who should be a minister and who won't. And that's Notre Dame law professor Richard Garnett speaking with Bloomberg's June Grasso. Catch more of that interview plus analysis of the latest legal news by subscribing to the Bloomberg Law Podcast or downloading the show at Bloomberg.com slash podcast. And attorneys can find exceptional legal research and business development tools at BloombergLaw.com. Futures this morning are now little change to lower. S&P futures down about two points, so they've been trimming their declines. NASDAQ futures now little change. Dow futures down 13. The 10-year Treasury little change, yield 0.70%. And the yield on the two-year at 0.17%. And Bloomberg Daybreak continues. This is Bloomberg. Influential conversations from Bloom. Did you know that Players of People's Postcode Lottery have raised over £500 million for charities and good causes? They've also won £63 million in prizes so far this year. And it could be your postcode next. Visit postcodelottery.co.uk slash radio before midnight on the 21st of May to play in the June draws. PPL manage lotteries on behalf of good causes 16+. plus. Conditions apply. Play responsibly. For more than 20 years, ASDA supported our communities. We've raised over £23 million for Fair Share and the Trussell Trust. And recently, we've donated supplies to frontline NHS workers and carers. We've always been proud to serve those around us. Visit asda.com forward slash creating change for better. ASDA, we're all in this together. TSB believe in people helping people. That's why they've created TSB Smart Agent, a new secure way for TSB to answer your personal and business banking questions online. Find out more at tsb.co.uk. Automated service available 24-7. TSB partners available 9am to 4.30pm Monday to Friday. Where will 2020 take you? Somewhere where people care. About each other. About our planet. About creating a better world for everyone and becoming the best versions of yourselves. Join a community of like-minded individuals at the University of Winchester. Make sure to accept your offer by the UCAS deadline and visit our website to find out more. See the bigger picture. Be the difference. Go to winchester.ac.uk. On the Bloomberg Business App and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, this is Bloomberg Radio. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak for Tuesday, May 12th, 2020. Coming up this hour. President Trump touts the government's coronavirus response as U.S. deaths pass 80,000. Thanks to the courage of our citizens and our aggressive strategy, hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved. The Senate holds a hearing on the response and the push to get America back to work. New York City will remain locked down in June. Plus, President Trump asks the U.S. Supreme Court for sweeping immunity. I'm Michael 
Russell Barr. More ahead. I'm John Stash. Our in sports baseball's plan for 2020 includes an 82 game schedule, empty stadiums, expanded rosters and playoffs, and the designated hitter in all games. That's all straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak on Bloomberg 1130 New York, Bloomberg 991 Washington D.C., Bloomberg 1061 Boston, Bloomberg 960 San Francisco, Sirius XM 119, and around the world on BloombergRadio.com and via the Bloomberg Business app. Good morning, I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow, and U.S. futures are trimming their declines. It is coming up to 6.01 on Wall Street, and we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures down, down two points. Dow futures down 13. NASDAQ futures are higher, up two and a half. The DAX in Germany, little change. CAC in Paris down three tenths percent, and the FTSE 100 is up six tenths of a percent. Nikkei 225 in Japan was down a tenth of a percent, and the Hang Seng in Hong Kong fell about one and a half percent. Ten-year Treasury, little change, yield 0.70%. The yield on the two-year, 0.17%. NYMEX crude oil up 3.9% or 93 cents at 25.07 a barrel. COMEX gold is up 6 tenths percent or $10.70 at 17.08.70 an ounce. The euro, 1.0819 against the dollar. The yen, 107.50. Nathan. Karen, the U.S. has prevailed when it comes to the coronavirus break that assessment from president trump late yesterday thanks to the courage of our citizens and our aggressive strategy hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved the president's remarks came as u.s covid 19 deaths surpassed 80,000. when pressed by reporters he clarified the success pertains to testing levels not victory over the virus when you have 80,000 people as of today when you have this the kind of death you're talking about when you have potentially millions of people throughout the world that are dying. That's not prevailing. What I'm talking about is we have a great testing capacity now. Data from the COVID tracking project show the U.S. now conducting more than 300,000 tests per day. In New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo is laying plans to restart business as soon as this Friday. And Bloomberg's John Tucker joins us live with the very latest. John, good morning. And good morning, Karen. New York reported 160 new virus deaths. That's the lowest in more than six weeks. And that has Governor Cuomo allowing low-risk businesses to resume work May 15th. All retail will be able to operate using curbside pickup. Construction, landscaping, and other outdoor activity can resume in areas with low hospitalizations and testing measures in place. And the question is now going to shift more towards localities and regions across the state. If regions see hospitalizations increase, Cuomo says they can ideally slow reopening rather than shutting down completely. In New York, I'm John Tucker, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, John, thanks. On Capitol Hill today, the Senate holds a hearing on the response to the outbreak and the push to get Americans back to work. Nancy Lyons has more from our Bloomberg 99.1 One newsroom in Washington. All the testimony will be conducted remotely because three of the administration's senior health officials scheduled to appear are under self-quarantine after coming in contact with someone infected with COVID-19. They include Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, Dr. Robert Redfield, the head of the CDC, and Dr. Stephen Hahn, the FDA commissioner. Even the committee's chairman, Senator Lamar Alexander, is in self-quarantine after one of his staffers tested positive. That's Bloomberg's Nancy Lyons reporting. That hearing gets underway at 10 a.m. Wall Street time. We'll bring it to you live right here on Bloomberg Radio. And when we do, Dr. Anthony Fauci will issue a stark warning on the risks of reopening too soon. He tells the New York Times that getting back to work without following CDC guidelines could spark many more outbreaks. Fauci says opening prematurely risks needless suffering and death. In the meantime, the push for more stimulus funding is gathering steam. Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey says a bill is gaining support from Republican lawmakers. The measure would send money to states and counties hit hard by the pandemic. The Smart Fund provides states with $500 billion in flexible funding, with priority given to the areas of our country with the greatest need. That need would be based on infection rates and lost revenue from the outbreak. House Democrats are drafting a plan that could come up for a vote as soon as Friday. As the pandemic cripples the airline industry, a major U.S. carrier will likely go out of business. That's according to Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun, who spoke with NBC News. You know, something will happen when September comes around. Traffic levels will not be back to 100%. They won't even be back to 25 
That's the Boeing CEO predicts a slow recovery with air traffic at depressed levels for months. It's a similar assessment from Southwest Airlines with CEO Gary Kelly telling us the industry faces a long road ahead. We're going to see a very gradual return of business traffic. That's very typical in a recessionary environment, and that's exactly what we've got. Meantime, in Europe, Ryanair is making plans to restore about 40% of its normal schedule this summer. The carrier will resume about 1,000 flights a day in July. Tension with China continue to rise over the coronavirus pandemic. Now the White House is taking steps to block investment in Chinese stocks. Bloomberg's Martin DeCaro is in Washington with the very latest. The Trump administration wants to block a government retirement savings plan from investing in China. Sources tell us the president's economic and national security advisors, Larry Kudlow and Robert O'Brien, made the request in a letter to Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia. In turn, Scalia wrote to the chairman of the retirement plan, telling him to stop putting government employees' money in a fund that includes Chinese companies. Bloomberg News obtained a copy of the letter, which says the administration has grave concerns about investing in China when it comes to both both investment risk and national security. In Washington, Martin DeCaro, Bloomberg Daybreak. Thanks, Martin. At the same time, China is stepping up purchases of U.S. soybeans. Bloomberg News has learned Chinese buyers bought over one million tons over the past two weeks. That's after trade negotiators from both countries recently spoke about implementing their phase one trade agreement. But China is also releasing a list of new tariff exemptions for U.S. goods. Beijing will remove levies from some medical disinfectants and radar equipment, plus nickel and aluminum products. Since February, China has issued waivers for nearly 700 American goods. S&P S&P futures lower by three points now. Dow futures down 22. NASDAQ futures down seven points. Straight ahead, the latest world and national news. This is Bloomberg. At 6.07 on Wall Street, we bring in Michael Barr for more on the coronavirus response. What else is happening around the world? Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Nathan. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio says the city will still be under lockdown in June. De Blasio announced the city is finding temporary homes for thousands who are homeless. They were removed from subways so the cars can be cleaned overnight. De Blasio says that 8,000 homeless adults are in hotels. That's about half of the single homeless adults who frequent the city's shelters. I told you uh, we were going to have a goal of moving 1,000 people per week out of shelters into hotel settings to keep opening up the shelters, to keep making sure we could do proper social distancing. We met that goal last week. We will be meeting it again this week. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy is requesting assistance for federal funds for his state. Murphy says the money would go to police, fire, and EMS services. The governor also called out Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell for his lack of support for states like New Jersey. Unfortunately, there are those in Washington, like Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, to pick a name, who don't seem to get it. These are leaders from states that are all too happy to spend the tax dollars of New Jerseyans on pork projects back home, but seemingly have no interest in helping states like New Jersey at this moment to avert a national economic catastrophe. President Trump will ask the U.S. Supreme Court today for sweeping immunity from Congress and prosecutors. At issue are his personal and business tax returns under subpoena by several congressional committees and the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, which wants them as part of an investigation into hush payments to women. The DA's office said no person is above the law. The Justice Department is determining whether the fatal shooting of Ahmaud Arbery should be charged as a federal hate crime. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation Investigation charged white father and son with felony murder. President Trump talked about the shooting during a White House Rose Garden news conference. I think it's horrible and it's certainly being looked at by many people. I'm speaking to many people about it. Uh, he uh, looked, I saw the picture of him in his tuxedo. It was so beautiful. I mean, he looks like a, a wonderful young guy. Uh, would have been a wonderful, uh, I mean, just a wonderful guy. I think it's a horrible thing. Global News 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. Thanks, Michael. It's 6.09 on Wall Street and time for the Bloomberg Sports Update. Here's John Stashauer. All right, Nathan, after two months of rumors, speculation about how, when, where baseball will look in 2020, we now know at least what MLB wants to do. Owners will meet with the Players Association today. Details of the plan leaked out yesterday in 82. 
two-game schedule to start early July. The DH, even when National League teams play, expanded rosters to 30, expanded playoffs to 14 teams. The Mets and Yankees would play at an empty city field and Yankee Stadium. There'll be more Subway Series games, and all the games will be versus other teams in the East, like the Red Sox, Phillies, Nationals, and Orioles. Before baseball's back in the U.S., the Premier League said to be ready to resume play in June in the U.K. Back here, there'll be golf next month, starting in Texas, the Colonial. And there's a NASCAR race with no fans this Sunday, Darlene's in South Carolina. But with no live sports, so much attention has been paid to this ESPN documentary about Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Forgive Knicks fans if it's all a painful reminder, and forgive Nick Great, Patrick Ewing. I played 17 years. And like you said, six years, uh, we played against the Bulls six times. We were, only, we were only able to win one of those uh, times, and unfortunately, he wasn't there. So he's been talking trash from the first day that I met him, and he still continued to talk trash, telling me that I, that I have never beaten him when he counted. Yeah, was on ESPN. Happened four times in a five-year span where the Knicks season ended with a playoff loss to the Bulls. Knicks won in 1994. When Jordan was playing baseball. John Stashower, Bloomberg Sports. Nathan. All right, John, thanks. In other sports news, billionaire George Soros is betting on DraftKings. Quantum Partners, an investment vehicle that Soros runs, has taken a $66 million stake in the sports betting company. Other DraftKings investors include NFL owners Jerry Jones and Robert Kraft, Bain Capital co chairman and Celtics co owner Stephen Pagliuca, and Madison Square Garden Entertainment, which is controlled by the owners of the New York Knicks, the Dolan family. Futures pairing their losses. This is Bloomberg. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Imagine. Imagine being denied an apartment because of your religion or your race or because you have children or a disability. It's so wrong. Yes, but who has the power to stop this? You do. Each of us has the power. The law is on your side. It's illegal for landlords to discriminate because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status. If you suspect that you have experienced housing discrimination, file a complaint with HUD immediately so we can investigate it. Fair housing is your right. Use it. To learn more, visit HUD.gov slash fair housing. That's HUD.gov slash fair housing. Or call 1-800-669-9777. 1-800-669-9777. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. Why do hedge funds and other... Did you know that Players of People's Postcode Lottery have raised over £500 million for charities and good causes? They've also won £63 million in prizes so far this year, and it could be your postcode next. Visit postcodelottery.co.uk slash radio before midnight on the 21st of May to play in the June draws. PPL manage lotteries on behalf of good causes 16+. plus. Conditions apply. Play responsibly. half-price dream holiday wouldn't want to miss that a takeaway for free wouldn't want to miss that and 30 gigs data for just 10 pounds a month on smarty mobile you definitely don't want to miss that our smarty sim comes packed with 30 gigs of data and unlimited calls and texts for just 10 pounds a month on a one-month plan that's why smarty won best value sim only network in the you switch mobile awards 2020 don't miss out search smarty mobile smarty simple honest mobile smarty.co.uk This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. 
to help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. Picture in your mind a stylish Audi with striking LED headlights, sporty alloy wheels, and some of our most advanced features, including a 10-inch digital cockpit and smart assistance systems like lane departure warning. Picture what that Audi looks like. Now think smaller. The Audi A1. It's not a small car, it's a small Audi. Visit audi.co.uk. Audi. Vorsprung durch Technik. Here's Sherry Ann. Oil declined as Dow circulated over Saudi Arabia's ability to implement additional pledged production cuts. The kingdom says it will pump 7.5 million barrels a day next month, about a million barrels below its official OPEC Plus output target and the lowest level for 18 years. Let's discuss this with Nasdaq Senior Energy Director Tamar Esner. Tamar, great to have you back. So we have seen the rise in oil prices in the regular New York session, but then those gains being erased. What does this tell us about how big the supply glut is at the moment and how much Saudi Arabia's latest moves could help? Great to be here. Um, I, I think that the market was a little taken aback by Saudi's announcement today. We're only 11 days into what was a historic agreement in terms of the duration and the, the degree of cuts, and already they're cutting further. So it was sort of a negative indicator in terms of a read through that they're perhaps seeing on the demand side. Um, more broadly, I do think that the oil fundamentals are improving a little bit, but from a low base. Uh, and we see that reflected in the price. You know, we're up. Uh, quite a bit over the last couple of sessions, although not today. Um, I think that the supply is being reined in. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. U.S. stock index futures reversed an earlier decline. European stocks are nudging higher and Asian shares retreated as investors digested an uptick in coronavirus infections in several nations, as well as signs of fresh trade tension. Oil is rising. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures up about two points now. Dow futures up 18. NASDAQ futures up five. The DAX in Germany is up a tenth of a percent. Ten-year Treasury down 132nd yield 0.71%. Yield on the two year 0.17%. NYMEX crude oil is up 4.1%, up a dollar at 25.14 a barrel. COMEX gold is up 7 tenths percent or $11.90 at 17.09.90 an ounce. The euro 1.0822 against the dollar, British pound 1.2343, and the yen at 107.47. U.S. small business owners more pessimistic about their revenue outlook than at any point in decades. If your share anticipate the return will be brief. The National Federation of Independent Businesses Index of Sales Expectations for the next six months plummeted 30 points in April to minus 42, the lowest in the group's monthly data back to 1986. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael. Thank you very much, Karen. Coronavirus deaths in the U.S. have passed the 80,000 mark. However, there are signs more states are trying to reopen, including the hardest hit state. Bloomberg's John Tucker in New York has more in this live report. And Michael, in New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo says the state economy is ready to begin reopening, with some regions upstate authorized to do so as soon as this week. Mayor Bill de Blasio says the city's lockdown is likely to continue into June. Citywide hospital admissions have declined, along with intensive care admissions. New York reported 160 new virus deaths. That's the lowest in more than six weeks. John Tucker, Bloomberg Daybreak. South Korea has reported a spike in new coronavirus cases. Health workers will test thousands of people who visited night spots in Seoul after detecting dozens of infections linked to club goers. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 20.
2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. Okay, Michael, thanks. It's just before 6.20 on Wall Street, live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios. This is Bloomberg Daybreak, and Sam Stovall is with us now, Chief Investment Strategist at CFRA. Nice to talk with you this morning, Sam. Uh, you know, we've uh, spoken with a number of analysts who see a lot of choppiness ahead for investments as more states reopen during the pandemic. Where do you see markets going from here? Well, good morning, Nathan. Uh, I think choppiness is probably a good way to describe what the trading action will likely be. Um, from a seasonal perspective, we are in a very uh, choppy period right now that, as we all know about the uh, May through October period, uh, also because of the states opening up, you have people who are questioning whether we're opening too soon, et cetera. We continue to get economic data. In particular, this coming Friday will be a pivotal day with retail sales expected to be off by double digits. Ditto for industrial production, et cetera. So I think investors are sort of looking at this week, certainly from a technical perspective, that it could be a make or break week. You know, it's fascinating. Uh, Karen mentioned the uh, small business optimism index coming in at a pretty historic low here. And now we're starting to see a few contracts edge higher after uh, being in the red for most of the overnight. Uh, How do you explain that? Well, again, I think it's investors who are looking across the valley. Um, They're basically saying, yes, we know that 2020 is going to be bad. Tell us something we don't know. Hmm. So I think that if there's going to be a surprise to investors, it'll be an upward surprise, not a downward surprise. Plus, I think that uh, whatever negative macro data could come out that's worse than expected, the belief is that that, um, the, the Fed has the markets back. And if we look to earnings for 2021, we're looking at 30% growth for large caps, almost 50% growth for mid caps, and 80% growth for small caps. Also, very strong earnings expectations for the developed and emerging markets. So uh, I think that investors are basically looking beyond this very wide and very long valley. Interesting. Are you thinking that now then is the time to start uh, looking more closely at small caps as an investment, given the support that we're getting uh, from the Federal Reserve? Yes, I do. Uh, We've been seeing an improvement in the small cap arena over the last several weeks. Um, Last week, uh, small caps were up about 4.5% versus 3.5% for the 500. Mid caps were up about 5.5%. We also find that a majority of the sub-industries within the S&P 1500 that have below the uh, median market cap were leaders. So we're seeing an improvement in breadth overall. Uh, and I think that in terms of valuations, you know, small caps look a lot more attractive uh, than the large cap brethren. Yeah, we heard this week from Goldman Sachs, uh, of course, that the uh, S&P could drop by nearly 20 percent given all the risks ahead. Is that more of a risk for for large caps as opposed to small caps, do you think? Well, small caps really did take it on the chin uh, over the, the past period. So they uh, have been fairly well shaken out. Uh, I think that, you know, we certainly could see a consolidation of the recent advance. The S&P 500 is up more than 30 percent from its March 23rd low. All of the sectors, styles, sizes uh, are in positive territory. And about 98 percent of the sub-industries in the 1500 are above their uh, 923 lows. So, sure, we could have some sort of digestion of gains, but I don't think that we are going to set a lower low, certainly because of all of the stimulus uh, from a monetary and fiscal perspective with more likely to come. Only about 30 seconds left here. What about the risk posed by renewed tensions now between the U.S. and China? Is that a concern for you? It's just another fly in the ointment, in my opinion. Uh, We certainly uh, have had to deal with this since February of 2018. Um, I guess the question is, gee, do we really need this now? Uh, So it's just something that investors have to consider, but I don't really see it as a major headwind. All right, Sam. Good talking with you this morning. Thanks for being with us. Sam Stovall is Chief Investment Strategist 
at CFRA. And as we mentioned, futures have uh, turned into the green now with S&P futures up four points. Dow futures, a gain of 47 points, and NASDAQ futures are higher by 15 points, tracking uh, European stocks also moving higher for the most part. The 10-year is now down 132nd, yield up to 0.71%. Two-year Treasury yield at 0.17%, and the yield on the 30-year note is 1.41%. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. The early market indicators are narrowly mixed ahead of the opening bell amid an uptick in coronavirus infections in several countries and fresh signs of trade tension between the U.S. and China. It was a mixed close to start the week on Wall Street. The S&P was mainly little changed, up less than a point. The Dow fell 109 points. The Nasdaq was up 71. Twitter is going to start putting labels on tweets that contain questionable information about the coronavirus, both going forward and retroactively. The company says that the labels will include links to other sources providing more information tied to claims made in tweets. If the tweeted information is found to be misleading, then Twitter might remove the tweet altogether. And Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun says it's likely that a major airline will go out of business as the COVID-19 pandemic keeps passengers off planes. He made the comments in an interview to be aired on NBC's Today Show. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then go to Babbel.com, download the app, and try it for free. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just go to Babbel.com and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or go to Babbel.com and try it for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Debbie Hart is president of BioNG. Did somebody say just eat? Me, get delivery like a G. See, hungry dogs gotta eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib. I'm sitting in. Burger in the low low. Hope they put the pickle in. One time on a catamaran. Oodles and noodles. Thank you, my man. J U S T E A T. Somebody say just eat. Switch on Acorn TV, the brand new streaming service featuring world-class TV from Britain and beyond. Watch exclusive premieres like the colourful crime drama Queens of Mystery. Once you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And fan favourites like Inspector George Gently. I'm just an old copper doing his job. If you love drama with a little mystery thrown in, enjoy 30 days free with code ACORN30. Then just $4.99 a month. No adverts, no contract, cancel any time. Join online today at acorn.tv. This is a message from the government about the emergency measures to support the economy during the period of disruption caused by the coronavirus. To help you, your business, and your workers affected, you can apply for cash grants, business rate holidays, statutory sick pay relief packages, as well as the coronavirus job retention and self-employment income support schemes. For information, go to gov.uk forward slash business dash support now. For more than 20 years, ASDA supported our communities. We've raised over £23 million for Fair Share and the Trussell Trust. And recently, we've donated supplies to frontline NHS workers and carers. We've always been proud to serve those around us. Visit asda.com forward slash creating change for better. ASDA, we're all in this together. While most of us are looking out for each other at this time, sadly, fraudsters are trying to take advantage of the situation. Here's Chris Ainsley from Santander with advice for keeping your money safe. Please be vigilant for suspicious calls that appear to be from your bank, the police or the government. Remember, neither Santander, the police or any other organisation 
will ask you to move or withdraw money for security reasons. For more advice on keeping your money safe, visit santander.co.uk. Typical Danny. Last night I was chilling with my girls, but ended up spilling my Chardonnay all over my fave lilac nighty when I saw the photo I was tagged in. State of my fake tan. <sighs> But no worries, just one wash and my clothes will smell perf with Surf. Surf gives you long-lasting fragrance with natural essential oils. Find your fragrance in Surf's laundry range. Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. It's 630 on Wall Street. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. We're just about three hours away from the opening of U.S. trading. Let's get you up to date on the news you need to know at this hour. S&P futures are gaining, reversing earlier declines as the White House ramps up efforts on coronavirus testing. President Trump is touting the government's response to the pandemic. Thanks to the courage of our citizens and our aggressive strategy, hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved. Data show the U.S. now conducting more than 300,000 coronavirus tests per day. And New York State is laying plans to restart business as soon as this Friday. Bloomberg's John Tucker joins us live with the very latest. John? And good morning, Nathan. Governor Andrew Cuomo is reporting the lowest number of deaths in more than six weeks. That has the state allowing low-risk businesses to resume work May 15th. We're all anxious to get back to work. We want to do it smartly. We want to do it intelligently. Starting Friday, all retail will be able to operate using curbside pickup. Construction, landscaping, and other outdoor activity can resume in areas with low hospitalizations and testing measures in place. In New York, I'm John Tucker, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, John, thank you. On Capitol Hill, the push for a fourth round of stimulus is gathering steam. House Democrats are crafting a bill that includes more than $2 trillion in funding. The measure could come up for a vote as soon as Friday. Well, tensions with China continue to rise over the coronavirus pandemic. Now the White House is taking steps to block U.S. investment in the country. Sources tell us the administration is pushing to stop a government retirement savings plan from moving $50 billion into a fund that includes Chinese equities. In California, Elon Musk has restarted production at Tesla's car plant despite warnings from county officials. And we get more on that story from Bloomberg's Mark Mills. The Tesla CEO is doing battle over measures to contain a virus that he downplayed starting in January. After claiming COVID-19 wasn't all that viral a disease, then calling panic about it dumb in March, he's also theorized fatality rates are overstated and wrongly predicted that new cases would be close to zero by the end of April. In a tweet Monday, Musk said... I will be on the line with everyone else. If anyone is arrested, I ask that it only be me. Mark Mills, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Mark, thank you. Again, S&P futures are higher up five points. Dow futures up 53. NASDAQ futures up 16. The DAX in Germany is up four-tenths of a percent. Ten-year Treasury down 4.30 seconds, yield 0.72 percent. And the yield on the two-year, 0.17 percent. NYMEX crude oil is up five and a third percent, up $1.29 at $25.43 a barrel. And COMEX gold is up about seven-tenths percent, or $11.20 at $17.09.20 an ounce. Straight ahead, we of the latest world and national news and this is bloomberg all right karen thanks 633 on wall street and michael barr has more on the local and global response to COVID 19 michael thank you very much nathan while parts of new york state are set to reopen new york city will remain in a lockdown in june however new york city mayor bill de blasio says the downward trend of COVID 19 indicators is a start but it needs to be consistent He announced that the three main daily indicators, hospitalizations, the percentage of people who have tested positive, and the amount of people who entered the intensive care unit are down. This is exactly the kind of day we want to see. Now let's see if we can stretch a number of these days together, and that will be the signal that it's time to start talking about relaxing some of these restrictions. Meanwhile, dozens of children in New York City are being sickened by a mysterious inflammatory illness that doctors say might be connected to COVID-19. New Jersey is one of many states asking for more funding from the federal government, especially for first responders and those on the front lines. Governor Phil Murphy talked about the urgency. A f- fiscal disaster 
is not months away. Hard and unpalatable decisions are being made in the here and now. They'll be on our doorstep in just a few weeks. New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez said he is co-sponsoring a bill with Republican Bill Cassidy of Louisiana that would set aside $500 billion for states. President Trump tweeted that the great people of Pennsylvania want their freedom now and that the state should be safe, move quickly. The state's Democratic Governor Tom Wolf responded to the president. I don't know how you stay safe and and move quickly. The irresponsible thing to do, as I said earlier, is to just willy-nilly go off and... Uh, pretend that we can wave a magic wand and go back into business and suspend uh, the reality of this virus that's surrounding us. Today, the-